How's it going, friends and family of the internet? Welcome to the Real AF TV podcast. Love show about fishing and random takes. Damn. From the land of 10,000 lakes. I'm one of your hosts, X-Pac with short hair. Yes. <laughs> and I am the other host who, for the first time ever, interrupted your intro because <laughs> your pause <laughs> made me audibly go, damn. <laughs> I was okay. not trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's Caught okay. It's okay. I was uh, preparing for my setup joke there, and I got in my own fucking way. <laughs> I was like, I "Shit, thought, what was I gonna say again?" Oh wait, yeah. just use breath. Use use your breath to cover it up <laughs> that you fucked it up a little bit. That you I, were thinking ahead. I think the problem for me was that I thought it like froze up, and then when you came back in, I realized that it wasn't like a moment of freeze. It was like how you were saying it. <laughs> so that's when it hit me, and I was right. like, "Damn, that wasn't oh, a, that didn't freeze. It wasn't that was freeze. you." <laughs> and uh, it just came out and I was like, oh, shit. I mean, dude. <laughs> oh, that's great. Maybe this is why the algorithm doesn't pump our videos up because we swear too much right at the beginning. As soon as we start, we're just like, shit, damn. Piss. <laughs> I didn't say the F word yet. <laughs> oh, I did. Because I said oh, I did fucked you? it up. Yeah. Well, fuck. <laughs> I'm one of your hosts, Josh LeBa. And I am Tim Mother... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tim Wagner. And I'm not trying to drop the F-bomb. Like, I don't know. Maybe there's an algorithm where they're just like, we'll let a couple slide. And then they just go, turns out you guys had like 40 in the first five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we go, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes that happens. Uh, no, because our videos are getting pumped up organically if you start like there must be something now where we're fall, fall, falling into the like outdoor um activities algorithm yeah because i see it um i can see it happening okay nice so that's cool but anyways okay we're just gonna kick it off with some housekeeping right away because this is the iCast 2024 special. We got nothing else on the agenda. Just iCast 2024 from top to bottom, head to toe. So I'll just do the housekeeping really quick. Like, subscribe. You're on, we're on YouTube. We already kind of said that and blah, blah, blah. If you're listening on podcast. If you're on Amazon, I t- tell if, 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 if it's free. Leave a comment uh, on the YouTube or go to realaf.tv slash contact and email us directly and just be like, yeah, I get it for free on Amazon. And then, you know, podcasts, other podcasts and shit, you can still subscribe. I don't know um, because I have a gifted Prime uh, shit. So I have like a paid for Amazon account. And I'm curious how that's working because I'm pretty sure it's free. Uh, Apple, you can do reviews over there. Those always help. That is where we have some reviews and it seems to be helping. (laughs) Tim's eating his microphone. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. iHeart, Spotify, YouTube podcast now because Google, remember, uh, Google podcast is dead. They went to just, uh, YouTube music, uh, with podcasts and it's really cool. Cause you can just flip back and forth between the audio and video. Just there's a button for it. So people like us who do the combo, uh, it's, it's a touch of a button on that YouTube app. It's a uh, YouTube music app. It's pretty dope. Remember, it's youtube.com slash at realaftv, and you can find all that stuff. You go to the music app and find us in a similar way. We shut down the Patreon because if you didn't hear it in the last episode, in episode 95, there was a special announcement how we are going to be taking a break. Go back to episode 95 and figure it out over there. Come on. I got some fishing stuff to talk about. We got some fishing stuff to talk about. So, Tim, let's do it. Let's do this thing. Yeah. I cast 2024. First thing I want to be clear is we didn't go to I cast 2024. We scoured the internet individually and we are now here to bring you the best of what we found across the internet for I cast 2024. 
Yes. Let's get jiggy with it. Oh. Jiggy, you get it? I just I... put that together. Well, uh, I wrote that down <laughs> because I, I connected <laughs> that as I was looking for ICAST 2024 stuff. Getting jiggy with it. Ba 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 da ba. Ba 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 da. Getting jiggy with it. Tim, yep. do you want to go first? Or do you want me to start it off? Dude, let's you you go first. All right, I'm gonna kick I it off. I got a lot. I got a lot. I got so. a lot. Okay. Well, I'm gonna kick it off with soft plastics and something that we were stoked on last year, and that's yeah. why I want to kick it off with that. Crush it. City. Yes. Because Arapala. Coming into that soft plastic game, um, correct me if I'm wrong. Refresh me if I'm miss, you know, speaking here. You said Rapala maybe sort of kind of dug into the plastic game and then just fucking fell on their face and got out. And now here's Crush City. Yeah, Rapala had uh, Trigger X for a while. And I don't know if it's like that was... I don't know if they actually made those baits themselves, but it was like made by Rapala. But like... Storm is also like technically Rapala, so it might have yep. been something where like somebody else, like Rapala, owned the company. Yeah, where they were like, and they were making it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they, I had a decent amount of Trigger X stuff, but it kind of like fell under. People weren't feeling it, I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Okay, but yeah, that's it. Was called Trigger X, and it was supposed to like trigger the bite or oh, whatever. Okay, okay, and yeah, they don't exist anymore. Sure. But yeah, last year, Crush City came out, and they're a hit. I okay, from what you're hearing, it's a hit. It seems like a hit. I got some. Well, I mean, like the they're pros are beautiful, dude. But if you yeah. got the pros using them, that's a big deal, and the uh, pros are killing it. Yeah, on the new one of the new baits. Okay. Okay. Is making a shit ton of money. Well, and one of the things that I had right here, it's just my second, or like it's, you know, one of my uh, bullet points right here about Crush City. It's like, I was, because we were so excited about it last year, we were talking about it on the 2023. It wasn't even out yet. And when they came out, I think immediately me and you went and bought some. I think it was like, I I personally was like, I don't want them to sell out. I got to get some right away. So I was on that shit. Like, yeah. Um, which they didn't, as far as I know, they were never there was never a shortage. Um, but no, it's like sometimes the color that you want to oh, sell out. That's yeah, what yeah. I always notice. Right. Like it's almost always there's stuff there, but like whatever the hot color is there's a that people are color. feeling, yeah. that one will just disappear. Right. Yeah. And then you're like, Well, I guess this one's good enough a lot of times. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually think that's what I did with my crawfish ones. I've been the crawdads, whatever you want to call them. I think that, I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah. So this year I saw Crush City and this was one of my bullet points. I was like, new colors and stuff and the line is expanding. Like it felt like Rapala had put another big foot forward into the soft plastic game with Crush yeah. City that this year it was like, we're here to stay, baby. Like that's what it yep. felt like. It felt really good to see them. Well, I think... I think that even plays on like how good the public is receiving them too. Oh, right. It's yeah. almost like good we'll point. test the water with some of the baits that people are feeling mm-hmm. or like that we think people will like. Yeah. And then because they sold well, I think then you got the execs higher up yep. that are just, you know, you come to them like, we got an idea for like five more baits. And they're like, make them all. Like, uh, yes, sir. On it. <laughs> We're on it. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay. So on that, on that note, yeah, that's, that's a very good thought. And now what I saw is they got that tough, stretchy, durable, expandy stuff. Like, yeah, it, it looked to me like, or no, they said it, but I don't know what they called it. But they have a new kind of like super durable plastic. Yeah, that they're putting I out there, can't right? remember what they call theirs, but like I think Z Man like started using it a lot. But like mm-hmm. I think a lot of people call it like an elastomer. Oh, okay. So it's like kind of like part elastic, part whatever. Polymer. I can't. Kind of polymer. Yeah. Is polymer plastic? I don't know. 
Elastic I think it's polymer, a form plastic. Of it. Yeah. I can't remember if I wrote plastic. down. But you saw that, right? I mean, you saw that they have it. It's not yeah. the same. Like they have these specific models, I guess, that are Some made out of, them, of this new yeah. plastic, right? Some of them have that new plastic and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think it was the mooch minnow is made out of that. Okay. And the mooch mo- minnow is the money maker. Yeah. The mooch minnow has a cool tail. Yeah. So I plan on putting all the, like if anybody wants to follow along too, by the time this comes out, I should have on our Instagram page, I should have all of this stuff on Instagram. So you can like look at the pictures nice, and Thank follow you, along with us while we're rolling. Yeah. Instead of just being like, what are you talking about? You know? <laughs> so Perfect. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I remember because, you did that last year too. You put up a lot of stuff last year. Yep. Yeah. And this one's a lot more like bait oriented. There are some other things on there that I'm excited about. <laughs> <laughs> but so check this out. What I got for Rapala Crush City, the Mooch Minnow is making big bucks. They like for the there. pros or for yeah, Rapala Jacob, or does, we, does that mean both? Jacob <laughs> No, both. I think. Well, the other I, hasn't come out yet for us. Oh, so the so yeah, the Mooch Minnow was the new one with the two, with the double. Yeah, it's got sorry, the double I'm tails. Jumping, I'm stepping on. No, your no, shit. no. It's that's exactly what I'm getting into. It's like got a tight tail wiggle. It's real subtle. Yeah, and like real tight. And they talk about how like that's what the shad and stuff kind of they have a little wiggle with the tail. They don't have like a big thumping. You know, yeah. So they almost made this little wiggle that mimics a regular bait fish better than what the other ones were. Plus, the minnows are super popular because the minnow baits are, you know, forward-facing sonar is the big thing, and the yep. minnow baits show up really well on the sonar. So oh. almost everybody has a minnow bait or some sort form of a new bait. I got a shit ton of stuff on here that's all like everybody's trying to make sure that the signal comes back to the forward facing sonar better and stuff like yes they're totally making baits now specifically for the forward facing sonar like it's it's opening up a whole new world of like stuff that you normally wouldn't be fishing but they're like no we need to figure out a way to make these things so anyways the the (laughs) mooch minnow yeah the mooch minnow has been winning. There was two different pros. Jacob Wheeler's one, and I can't remember who the other guy was right okay. now. Yeah, but they said that they're like five, six hundred thousand dollars. These God things are like damn. one so far. But yeah, so here's a list of Crush City new stuff. You got the pig stick, damn. which is, you know, like a like a stick bait style like worm. Yep. So which is like what a like what a Senko is or whatever. But it has like little notches on it to be able to put a ring on it. Oh, which like a O ring. Uh So then you get to then you get to fish all like it makes it easier to rig up your, you know, Nico rig or what have you. There's a bunch of different stuff that's like that. The Nico tiny child chicken rig. All those are different kinds that are all different variations of like how you put the hook and Mm -hmm. where you put the weight and shit, but it's Mm -hmm. all like an O-ring or, you know, not necessarily an O-ring, all of them. doesn't really matter. I'm getting into the weeds here. I'm not trying to. (laughs) Okay. Yep. But it makes it easier to do that. And you can rig it up on like a couple of different things. And I kind of like some of those baits too, because like in a pinch, if you don't have a bait that's like the exact size you want, you could just cut it down to the same size that you want. You know, like if you wanted to put it on a Ned rig, if it's a six inch bait, you can just cut off two inches of it, you know, sure. and then put it on. It's not ideal, but like for whatever reason, if that's what you got, that's what you got. You know? Right, right. Yeah. You make a quick modification, a game day decision or a game, yeah, a game time decision yep. and just go with it. Yep. So that was when you hear the stick is like kind of thick the whole way down. That's really what I was like going to say. It's like a worm, like a fat worm almost all the way through. And then it's just like the yeah. ends are lopped off flat, right? The one end is lopped off flat. I think the other end is tapered a little bit. Oh, okay. 
So there is kind of like a front and the back, but it's only oh, okay. tapered into like a cone slightly. And then you've got the mooch minnow, which is the minnow with the the tiny tail, and it's like and on it's the top a dual tail, right? That's what I was talking about. Yeah, like it's a yeah, tail's it's like a tail. Top. It's got two little. Yep, yep, hanging off the end of it. It's like the it's like a almost like a cross. It's like the tail comes off the back, and then you got like. The oh, is that what main it was? Tail on, yeah, okay. it's like the so you got like the minnow's body with the tail comes off, and then on the back there's like a little tiny where there's one tail that goes above and one that goes below. A little bit so it's cool looking man it is i want to use it it is it's nothing like when you look at it you're like what the, what's the <laughs> significance of that but i apparently it's just the right subtle action to kill it yeah and finesse is another big thing that's playing a role right now so the finesse yeah. market and the the forward facing sonar are like that's what's going on right now. There's there's obviously other shit, but like those are the two big hitters that you were just hearing constantly. Yeah. When we get through Crush City, Crush City, we will before we get into the next thing, we'll dive yeah. into that. Okay. So next on the list is the hedgehog, which is a creature bait. They didn't have <laughs> yeah. a creature bait. So to have a creature bait is cool cuz you can like, you know, Texas rig or Carolina rig which is almost the same thing except for you just drag the bait on the ground. Okay. Yep. So it just kind of looks like a weird creature crawling across the ground. Oh, okay. Or a Texas rig is just kind of a weird creature hopping across the brown ground. Or, you know, you could put a heavy weight and punch that thing through matted cover or whatever mm. it might be. But that's a creature bait. If you know about creature baits, you know what you can do with them. Yeah. And it's weird. Uh, <laughs> it is weird. Cool way. It's, it's literally like it doesn't look creature like a hedgehog, baits. but creature baits are called creature baits because that's what you got to call them. Yeah, they don't because it's a made anything. up creature. It's a, it's a yeah. fake bug. <laughs> it, yeah, exactly. It's like a bug that just has like a bunch of flanges and stuff. It could be kind of like a crayfish. It could be a giant bug. It could be whatever. It's just a yeah. bunch of flanges and stuff. It just moves. There's yep. a lot of them out there. Weird shit. Some yep. of them look like lizards. Some of them look like nothing. Yep. They're just alien. Yep. Uh, there's the janitor, which is a straight tail worm. So oh, I know I miss this one. When I say straight tail worm, it sounds like the other one. It's not. It's more like, um, like the zoom is more of like your regular old school style worm. Okay. Or like a or like a robo worm. I don't know. Is those a popular words. one. Those these are these are just. <laughs> but it's just like, like a regular looking worm. Yeah. Just a regular worm. But plastic. Like, yeah. But, yep. But it looks like it has a lot of, like, good, like, ribbon on it. Ribbing. Ribbing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So when you say so it's not cool. like a, it's like an exaggerated nightcrawler where you can see those ribs in a nightcrawler, but you can't, like, they're just right part of the worm where yep. you get these plastic worms and they are actually, they're actually, like, 40 different little columns, it looks like. Right. Like, 40 Oreos smashed together. Yeah, bunch of little Oreos, <laughs> tiny sleeves of crackers. <laughs> nah, just yeah, that's what it. it looks like. <laughs> a sleeve of crackers. Yep. But and then the other one that they got is the mayor was already out, but they came out with a two point five. Oh. So they have a mayor that's like four something inches, and then another one's like three and a half or something. Oh I yeah. Forget. Yeah. But I have I forget both the sizes, of those. But I they're... use both of those. Yep. Yeah. Good stuff. Good colors. And then the two five is, you know, quite a bit smaller. So it gives you like that finesse profile. If you're looking for like a profile, like a swim bait, you want to use. Yep. I put them on a jig, and I, you know, like rip them off the bottom. Mm. I've caught quite a few bass off of that. Uh, pike too. I have oh, not sure. caught. Uh, walleye off of it yet but okay. that's what i've been trying for okay. but i haven't been killing it with the walleyes either so it's this like year just I been get, a tough walleye year for you um a little bit yeah. it's just been weird like with the fishing and stuff like sure. this last weekend we hit a bunch of them um but i was drop shotting with live minnows oh gotcha yeah so i just you know 
not yeah. not terrible. I just yeah. haven't been using like all the artificials because the artificials were not catching as many fish. So I started trying to use some live bait. Yep, and we did okay. Yep, like three, bam, 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 on live bait, and then nice. we were like maybe we should stick with live bait for a little while. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the whole yeah. thing, right? Is like that's what we always are saying on the real FTV. Is just like, hey, real life TV is about telling you the truth about fishing. And that's yep. go out there, try some shit. You're going to make mistakes. There's going to be dead times. Switch it up. Yep. Switch it up. Switch it up. And it's not like these didn't catch bass, which a lot of people are probably out there trying to do. Right. So go catch you some bass. Yep. And that mooch minnow, dude, I want to try that for walleye so bad. Really? I bet it, I, I bet I kill the walleyes. Yeah. Honestly, that tight little wiggle. Yeah. I think it will. I think Sick. it will. Did you see when they come out? Like, did you, did you catch when the new Crush City was being released? Cause I didn't. Mm-mm. Okay. Yeah, no, maybe. I didn't see, I didn't see a release date on that. I Leave know a comment on the YouTube st- if you did. Yep. Some of this stuff is already out. So right, that's some the one of it thing is. That's, yeah. But those ones that aren't out yet, if you weird. if you caught when Rapala was gonna drop those uh them new plastics for Crush City, yep. you caught it. Come leave a comment in the YouTube video, please. You want I'll hit one other Rapala that's not Crush City. Oh, okay. Before we move on real quick. Yeah, go ahead. They got uh Bob Downey, Minnesota boy. Oh yeah. Uh Robert. Downey he Jr. called he himself. he pronounced it jawler but it's spelt with an o so i don't know if it's oh if that's just how he said it right or if it's jowler but it's a walk the dog topwater bait that has like the school oh, that yeah, has like the you're scoop. making the walk the dog noise yeah wah, 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 wah. <laughs> it has like a scoop bill on the front or like up in the face, yeah. Which walk the dog baits don't normally have a bill in the front at all, uh-huh. and it's like a scoop bill, like how they're erratic swimming. I think they're called like skitter. Oh, okay. I don't know. It's like a skitter pop. No, that's their top water. Their other one that has like a weird scoop. But there's like a a bill that's kind of weird shaped that swims back and forth all crazy. It's okay. almost like they took that bill inverted it and then put it on the front of this bait so when you walk the dog because it's got that like scoop thing it's like really throwing a lot of water every time it yeah. goes back and forth yeah yeah he was really talking about that he's like this thing throws <laughs> yeah yeah so that thing's new coming out um and then like i wrote down some other shit that doesn't really matter like i wrote down deep maverick which is the jerk bait that they came out with last year but now they have a deep version so oh. it's some of this stuff doesn't matter too yeah much. yeah no i mean like, if you wrote it down make, and you're just like ah, ah, next thing next thing because i yeah, know I'm we just got like i, I know we notes. got lists yeah. to go through here <laughs> yeah yeah um so what yeah 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 i'm gonna so the thing i want to talk about is what you got yeah. into there with crush city and the minnows and the way that they're showing up on front facing sonar and stuff like that dude okay two things i want to not gripe about but i want to just really point out is yeah this is a sales show. Mm-hmm. And so you're going to get sales pitched in a way. And I just yeah. want to say everybody and every booth says, make money out of this one. This one's making a lot of money. Like it's one of the first things everybody says. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> and you're just like, okay, okay, okay. It's not the 30th time I've heard this. It's the 30th time I've heard. This. It's the 37th right. time I've heard this. Yeah. Um, so I think it's really funny, but it, it I mean, it's true, but also when you said like wheelers out there making money and one other pro you're just yeah. slipping your mind right now, you know, and they not between the two of them, like each of them have won like half yeah. a mil off of this thing. And it was those pros themselves, not just guy, not just sales guys, because believe me, right? I can't remember which one it was. I almost wrote down the shit to be like, get yourself a different sales guy. Because <laughs> He was, he was literally just like, it's 110%. And just like <laughs> all of us like analytical fishermen are just like, that's right. not a real thing. That's not a number. Shut up. <laughs> just talk about your bait. 
<laughs> what <whatever. laughs> but I didn't like him at all. And it, it bothered me because they do do crap like that. Yeah. But the one pitch that I saw because I watched a bunch of different videos was Wheeler and like talking himself. Yeah. Being okay. like, this has been killing it on the tournament scene for yeah. me. Which is sick. Yeah. And yeah. that's, yep. So that was my gripe. I just wanted to get that out of the way. But the big thing we, I just, we're going to say it now and then we'll just go through this list with this in mind. Everybody. Yeah. Front facing sonar. Yes. F F S front facing yes. sonar. F F S. Yes. Everybody was talking about it. It was unavoidable. Every single uh-huh. thing, damn near everything besides apparel <laughs> right. was talked about in some way yeah. about how it works with fronts facing sonar because that yep. is so goddamn hot right now. It was and I, crazy, dude. Here is, I'm not going to tease this until later. I'm going to get this out of the you way right now. You are going to tease it and then say it? No. No. Oh, no, okay. I'm not going to. I'm telling you right now, we're getting into this shit now. <laughs> I'm not waiting. I'm going to tell you what's up now because of how it is forward facing and everybody's talking about it. And I don't want everybody out there to just be like, this is impossible. This is stupid. I don't have that much money. Now, I'm on the same side i'm looking at the forward facing or i have been up until now just being like this is not feasible right and or responsible even (laughs) in in uh, you know yeah in the middle class world it's like this still is not responsible (laughs) some of it's like where i just like i want it so bad but it it just isn't at the right price point because the transducer itself is like a thousand dollars. Jesus. And then you go oh my God, to dude. get the units that it uses, and the and the unit, like a seven inch unit, is like seven hundred and fifty dollars oh for like God, the lower end, or dude. at least it was. But here's what I'm talking about. Here we go. Now here we go. I know that this I know that this isn't cheap, people. Don't don't act like I'm telling you that this is the cheapest thing in the world. But, but but this is what but this Lawrence is so, do? <laughs> this is so attainable that it's blowing my goddamn mind, dude. <laughs> I heard this and I was just like, I need to get my name on like a waiting list because this is gonna sell out immediately, I think. I am still because I'm in the IT world and we're not yeah. seeing a shortage of electronics like we were even two years ago still. Yeah. But I don't know how. Yeah, we're teasing this. We're dragging this on. I'm gonna drag it. We on are a teasing bit. it a little bit, as we're <laughs> but we're here. still getting <laughs> yeah. into it. I, I am with you, where I have a pretty decent understanding of those electronics that go into this thing, yeah, and how there are still certain types of electronics that we yeah. have that I have difficult finding from time to time you know kind of got to keep an yeah. eye on it and wait it out sort of situation sure yeah i have no idea how they're going to keep these on shelves dude even I okay don't again it's not cheap it's attainable right. yes so again do it, do it. Let, let me let All me you. say this like how i said that a thousand dollars for the transducer and then a seven inch unit is like 750 but it's like another thousand dollars to get like a nine inch unit so you're like thousand dollars plus a thousand dollars to get on the water. The Lorance Eagle Eye is a nine inch unit with GPS and the down scanning and the forward facing mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. nine ninety five, dude. Mm-hmm. It's under a thousand dollars. But either way, what's the difference in four dollars? Well, I thought it, it did, they said nine ninety five, but maybe they said nine ninety nine. Yeah. Under a thousand dollars, it doesn't matter. I think I was so pumped. I don't even know if I heard the number. (laughs) I kept going like, "That's just the transducer, right?" Like, that's you didn't impress me there. And then they're like, "It's a nine-inch unit with the transducer that does all this." And I was just like, 
And then Ish Monroe's talking about it in the video I watched. And he's like, you still got your four. And he breaks it down. He's like, here's your GPS. Here's your down scan. Here's your regular. The uh, four player split screen. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's like, and here's your forward facing. And I'm just like, for real? Under $1,000, I can get a nine inch unit and a forward. For real? I'm not joking when I was like, oh, it, I can, I'm, I'm going to be able to have forward facing sonar pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's totally attainable. The I, And now I'm like, God damn, I wish somebody would have said something like two years ago because <laughs> I bought my unit and I think I could have just, I have like the other thing is this doesn't say that it has like any of the like side scan or anything. So I don't know if it has the capability of buying another transducer that will give you these capabilities. Cause I think some of the higher end units have all this stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't give a shit, dude. I don't <laughs> care. Yeah. I have yeah, side right. scan imaging on my unit now. And I'm like, that'll be the side scan imaging unit as I drive trying to find stuff. And I will get this Lawrence and I will mount that at the bow because right. that's, obviously where you're going to need to have forward facing you're going to have it up there with you while you're fishing right right and the way it mounts i'm sure i haven't looked but i'm sure that's going to mount like on a pole because that's how it seems to be on all of them you just kind of put the pole over the side and you just kind of turn it yeah yeah so that's a unit that i literally just have to get a battery pack and i can put it on wherever i'm at like because it comes it's going to be on the pole i it, it could be on the boat I'm on. Yeah. And that just whatever the boat is, I just right. have to get like a battery that I can carry with it. Yeah. And the battery's heavy enough that I can mount the freaking unit to the battery. Sure. And it, it could just be a standalone battery that sits wherever the hell I am on that. And it just, <laughs> yeah dude i dude i'm, I'm so, so glad that you're pumped on it because i heard it and i was like damn this is big this not is big. only is it big for them i think it's going to make the price point come down for everything else because everything as far as technology goes when they figure out the technology once they make their money that's when the prices start coming down yep. that's what happens with tvs and everything right everything forward facing sonar has been around for a little while and the prices are not budging dude i'm right. just like come on that's right. why i have side imaging now because side imaging finally got cheaper when forward facing imaging came around because that used to be a dream <laughs> where i'm just like i'm never going to be able to afford this side imaging and now all mm-hmm. of a sudden i'm just like i can actually it's not that bad yeah but yeah. now i look at this like i'm just over the moon dude <laughs> yeah yeah so like that's not awesome. shitting on Lawrence. i I absolutely love what you're doing here. If I could get a hummingbird at the same price and everything that can like network with my other stuff, oh. that would be dope because right. that's what I have. Right, right. But at the same time, step up your game, hummingbird, or I'm getting that Lawrence. I'm not hesitating, dude. This, <laughs> <laughs> not at I'm this not... <laughs> price, not on that four player split screen. No. Fucking dude. dude. I'm in. Yeah. It's so and, sick. The Lawrence is what I had first, and then I got the Hummingbird. So I'm not against them, and I'm not biased at all. I like the Lawrence. Yeah, I but got I you. got I I got the Hummingbird because I like I've used Minn Kota trolling motors the whole time. Oh and yeah, they and they're like work hand together hand, with right? yeah. Yep. So that's that's my big reason is down the road. I feel like that's how I would go. But yeah, anyways, right, dude that yeah this is fucking yeah i'm glad to just jumping into that one that one's ew, so good well that's why i was like i want to get that out of the way first to let people know that like it's far more attainable like i know it's yeah. still a lot of money and so the less steam, than a thousand dollars is so much better than like over two thousand dollars right know? yeah because that's what we were looking at and the theme that was buy, like, that yeah, was i cast of 20 like the 2024 i cast in my opinion there was a theme front facing sonar and you're right that's just good show running right there tim <laughs> yeah <laughs> bring yeah, it up though yeah, bring up the front facing sonar and now everything after this we're going to talk about revolves yeah. around front facing sonar <laughs> yes here we go and so uh, you can actually one thing seriously about the about front facing sonar 
yeah rear front facing sonar i was like what the flying fuck are you talking about beat down outdoors had a rear forward facing sonar wireless motorized mount so it was had fucking had a motor on it and everything so the way they sold it was it mounts to the back of the boat instead of the front of the boat okay you know because you and your buddy are out there fishing and you got one in the back and one in the front and i'm just like yeah thinking to myself who would the fuck can afford that and then the lorance thing happened and so then yeah it all kind of connected together but i was like whoa this is pretty cool so it seems like this back this beat down outdoors kind of had their own thing like they must have this patent sort of for this thing and it was well that's yeah it was dope. i wanted to look more into that too because i was confused because they were talking about that where they're just like because now your buddy's got one in the back and you got one in the front and i'm like so we have two yeah i would that's what i was trying to figure out like so you have a thousand dollars for the guy in the back and a thousand dollars for you because i'm not spending a thousand dollars on him <laughs> right right but job. With this Lorance unit that you're talking about, you each have your front facing sonars and then you go on a yeah. tournament and you just mount up on, you know, one now, of your boats. And did you hear boom. them say that you have to have two though? Because the one part that they were saying almost made it sound like you don't. And that's why I was lost. But I was like, I'm not going to look into it right now because I can't afford one. On and then this, I saw this. And on I was this like, rear oh, mount shit. thing? Is that what you're yeah. talking about? Yeah. No, no, no. It just is a way to mount your rear facing sonar. Right. And one but, of the pitches was, you know, these tournament yeah. fishers where you can dual dual up, like especially walleye fishing, I think has a yeah. lot of that dual two people in the boat situation. See, um, but like this So they just like, kind of sold it like that. Yeah. But it didn't have to be. It, no. I wasn't really I a lot of it I had on while I was like working. Sure. Because I I just kept playing a bunch of videos and I heard him talking about it. And some of the shit I just forgot to go back to until you like you brought that up, and I'm like, oh right. yeah, shit, I wasn't gonna look yeah, into yeah, that yeah. more. So but no, I swear he did, they said in no way. I swear but they, who has a trolling oh, motor back there to yeah. actually work the front facing sonar and shit? You know, I I swear they almost said that like you won't need to have two, uh, which is like I don't understand how that would even work. No, so you maybe have to have I'm, two units if you want to run front and back. This is just a mount. Like, yeah, it's just a mount that specifically gets it off the back of the boat. That's all. OK, because the back, you know, what is it called? Yeah, you've called you've used the words. I don't know. Fucking boat transom is the back. Yeah. So it basically yeah. was that like Bow this is, is just front. a way to get it off the back of the boat. Um, yeah. Instead of and he didn't you don't have to have two because you can take the one from up front and move it in back. But if you're by yourself. Yeah. Then how do you run the trolling motor? You don't. Right. Yeah. But the. I'll have to look into it more because the weird thing is, is like with the forward facing, it has its own mount that you like put over the side of the boat. So you can put it like wherever you want. I see a lot of people like that'll have it right at the side of the boat with them. Oh, you know? Yeah. I so that's don't what, know how it goes I'll, off the transom and then to, out, out, out the back. I don't understand enough about boats yeah. or front facing sonar to really yeah. be able to explain it more. I was just like, this thing's running off an app. It's motorized. Right. This thing is fucking sick. Yeah. And I know I, I don't know what it, it means to motorized. have front facing sonar in the back, but he said it's just you got two of them. Front. Yeah, it. it's front and it's whatever's in front of you. That's what it, that's what front facing sonar means. Yeah. Duh, yeah. Duh, Josh. Yeah. Of course it does. No. So <laughs> whatever's in front it, of you, you're fishing forward. News. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I got it. I got it. Beep, 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 beep. This just in. There's a new thing we don't know <laughs> it's <laughs> i'm sorry i would try to rip off that but i have no fucking clue where you're going i, can't, I couldn't i couldn't uh if then you're I was just, that one or you're yes just, then yes then. i was just laughing about it because basically we were like yeah there's like a mount and it's like forward facing but like aims out the back or something Oh yeah, I got you. <laughs> yeah, I was just being that dumb. That was the joke. Like, I got you. <laughs> yeah, we like, don't. We don't understand it. We don't. It's a thing, and <laughs> you guys should check into it if you're if you already have forward facing and you got two people and you're thinking about it or whatever. Check, check out Beat Down Outdoors. <laughs> check it out. That's what it's called. You could look into it yourself and see if you can make sense of it because <laughs> uh, I didn't make sense of it when I was pay- half paying attention. 
<laughs> so. Okay. All right. Let's jump off of that. Let's get into some uh let's get into some more baits or reels or what do you got, Tim? Yeah, you know what next I have on my list? This is just we'll just switch it up a bit because I got more baits and stuff. But did you see that St. Croix won the new category of best combos? Yeah, I was very surprised by this. Yeah. So I'm there's two things that I'm excited about about this. Like we don't need to get into all the different combos. First off, they're legit. You know they are. It's St. Croix. Okay. Yep. St. Croix has its own reels now. They're called seven. So there's Wait, seven like the, reels. The brand name or like they're the a, brand they're name. St. Croix Seven. It's well, it's just it's like a New York five. It's made by it's made by St. Croix. Yeah. It's made by St. Croix. But it's called seven and then it has i forget how they spell it it's like a clever thing in there oh like SBN something or something yeah it's something no it's like a full yeah it's something like that it's like the full word but there's like some something weird about it i can't remember off the top of my head okay. but it's called it's called seven um that's newish but they have them like paired up they're like, here's the reel and the rod, and they're paired up for like different ways of fishing and stuff. But they're like two hundred dollars for the combo, which again, not cheap. Right. But a two hundred dollar combo is a pretty decent price. And Saint Croix rods, mm -hmm. not cheap at all, dude. No. None of them are cheap. Okay. So to get a rod and a reel combo from them for two hundred bucks is pretty dope. Okay. And there, there's a chance that if I want one of their rods that they have in these combos, uh -huh. that I might want to put a different style reel on it. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that they're probably matched up pretty good and I won't have to dick around with it. Yeah. But sometimes I buy combos just to put it on different stuff where like, cause you just get a discount, you know? Right. Yeah. Where like, go, Oh, I want that rod. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get that reel. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to use that reel on that, but that reel will work on this other setup I have. Mm. type shit you know? i got you so I'll, I'll kind of move it around like yeah that, like you might look at it in one way where you're gonna spend if you get this reel that you don't kind of kind of don't really want it'll be 120 bucks but the rod you really want and that thing's 120 bucks but you put them together they're only 199 right and you're like well i mean I'm really saving forty dollars, right? Even though, right? Because I yep. got a use for that reel, even though I don't really want it. I got a use for it, right? Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. Where you're just like, I don't know about that reel for sure, but that'll come in handy. Sometimes I play the game of like the future too. Yeah, like I already got a reel for this rod, but that reel will work on the next rod I get. I have plans for this and I'll just like set the reel aside. Sure, sure. But yeah, I Sometimes didn't know that much about St. Croix. Reels not on rods. Like, right, there's a reel oh, just sitting next to you Wait. in your studio. <laughs> just, just, just waiting for a rod to come by. So. I love it. I didn't know that much about St. Croix. Obviously, I knew they're a respectable brand and all that stuff, but I didn't realize like they're expensive. So like for these guys specifically to be doing a combo, it, it was a big deal. But it's bigger than what I thought it was. And that's fucking cool. GXR combos. That's yeah. That's I got written down. Yep. That's oh, cool. I can't. Damn it. It didn't like pull up. Whatever. I was just going to like try to pull up the seven. Oh, I'm yeah. not going to. I'm not going to waste any more time. While you were talking, I was like, maybe I can get it real quick. And then it didn't pull. <laughs> well, I can keep it pulled going. Up, like, we can go some, to, no, it's all right. Hold we can on. go to Shimano. Quick. Don't leave yet. Don't leave. Oh, Don't leave. Too soon. Too the soon. Other, I just wanted to say real quick that yeah. the other thing that I think is really cool that this is a new thing that they're handing out awards for is that it's going to make other people want to do the same thing. Like, yeah, it might just be Get like, we're just going to give you a, compete. Uh, where it's where it's just like what Lawrence is doing. Right. Like you want to turn some heads. So it might not be the best thing that you have. But you like manufactured like one really legit combo where right, it might be right. like we don't have a full line of shit. Right. But here are two things at a remarkable price. Right. And it's like that's what I'm talking about. Right. Hook me up with that remarkable price shit. Yeah. Quality 
at, at a, a good price, price. Yeah, is what dude. I'm always about. That's <laughs> I'm always looking for those deals on the stuff that I know is good. Right. You know, I'm not out there just buying the cheapest shit, even though I feel like I should bring this up again when people are like, what was that? Cheapest shit. Cheapest Sometimes shit. I buy the cheapest shit. <laughs> but it looks cool. But that was a Timu reel where I just was like, let's see what it's all about. So yeah, it was more of an experiment than anything. That was an right? experimental thing. Yeah. So, and yeah. with St. Croix, but that's the thing, is the opposite of an experimental thing is St. Croix. Like, yeah. you just trust them. Yeah. You trust not, them to make a quality-ass product. They literally don't make anything cheap. Right. You know, there's right. a lot of brands that have, like way lower quality versions of what they make and that does not exist in saint croix it, nice there is not a cheap version yeah. of, there that's there sick. is not a low quality version yeah of a saint they don't croix. have a value line or whatever the fuck you want to call it right right yeah. no not that's at all cool. that's really they're cool. like they start High end, and then they get higher end. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great explanation. <laughs> you want to move on to Shimano quick? I only have one thing with Shimano. Hell yeah, dude. I only had the one thing, too. The Vanford? It's a Vanford, Vanford? A, I think it is. I have Vanford wrote, written down. If What's I'm, that? Unless I, unless I typoed it. I had Zumverno. Oh, okay. Well, this this one, they called it. Duracross drag washers, which I have oh. no idea what that means. I heard them talk about that. But this thing was made out of a carbon fiber resin. Yeah. I was like, whoa, dude. Yeah. Whoa. I heard him talking about it. Yeah. That is I heard sick. Him, I heard him talking about it because they he was talking about like how the felt washers on the drag. So the drag has like different washers on it okay take it apart real <laughs> the the drag has different washers on it and it's like how when the when the spool is being pulled uh-huh. it makes it like it's basically like friction that's being put on it okay and a felt one isn't quite as strong mm-hmm. but it's very smooth and then you go oh. to like a higher end version. Uh-huh. Um, I forget what the what the material was that they were talking about, but when you go to that, then it becomes, um, oh shit! Just like threw it on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't even know if this. Oh, and also, quick see. while you're while you're grabbing that, they said something about the bearings being super manufactured and all this stuff, and I'm like, yeah, but it's Shimano. They probably always yeah. do that stuff. <laughs> I didn't even really <laughs> note it, but I thought I'd bring it up quick here. <laughs> yeah, I thought maybe you could see it on this one. It's in there. I don't know. You can't really see it. Sorry for just making a bunch of ramp, ramp, ramp. Nah, it's a fishing <laughs> podcast, dude. That was yeah, that was great. I was trying to open a- that up to show you because it's like different stuff, but. So yeah, so what were you saying about these felt Anyways, is because that's what these yeah. are, right? Like, well, so it's like, yeah, there's the felt one that's smooth, and then the other one's like stronger, but it's not as smooth of a drag. Mm-hmm. And he was saying that that one's like the best of both worlds. So uh, that drag is like that's why I didn't understand it. Primo stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I didn't bring that one to the pod because like I figured if I tried to explain it, it'd be hard and yeah, you to did a good show. Job. I get it. show pictures it would be kind of tough so i was like so that one just know that that one's probably not gonna be on instagram because a picture is not gonna help you with that that one's more like you gotta go out and try it yeah i agree with that 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 one you, there's no it, it looks like a fishing reel and then you yeah. read about it and you go oh, okay now i get it like it's just a spinning yeah. reel in a photo right and then you read about it and you go okay 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 like yeah i wonder what carbon fiber resin feels right like, you know well it's just like the under armor deck boots dude i wrote that shit down yeah so they're they won the like boots or whatever that category was yeah and when you look at them they look like the other ones but according to the guy that was running you know talking about all of them they're the lightest boots out there yeah. they're the most athletic boots 
right that have ever been made they're they're deck boots so they're like fully waterproof and right. everything right and they have the same like cushioning system that they have in their like running shoes yeah so not and yeah the way i interpreted that because he he said that they have so this is the way that i interpret what under armor's doing and why i think it's so fucking cool based on what we saw there yeah is they got they got a grip like the under grip of the shoe it yeah. seems like they put a lot of research into that to okay. help it be slip resistant yeah and so like they have a sole that you know it may look like other stuff but like yeah they they built it they did their research and they they're trying something new yeah um that it's super comfy and long wearing because Under Armour makes running shoes and lifting shoes and they have other highly athletic sports that yes. they are. And I mean like cardio and physical strength and stuff like that, yeah. that they're yeah, yeah. developing shoes for. Mm -hmm. And they just use that facility to make a fucking waterproof boot high top yep. I, I call it a waterproof high top really but oh yeah being <laughs> no like they just use that same it. method that same facility to now make a fishing shoe and i'm like right yeah dude whoa yeah that is I know. fucking cool i thought it was pretty uh neat no, just pause. <laughs> and that's it <laughs> <laughs> no i thought it was the same thing because like all these other ones um, not shitting on the other ones, but you have a fishing company that's making a shoe. And right. now you have a shoe company making a fishing shoe. That's the easy way to put it. Yeah, dude. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So it does look dope. Uh, and I would like to, I would try them out if I needed them. You know? I agree. It's, I think it's more of a importance if you're fishing out of a bass boat because on windy days and stuff, you can definitely have even not on windy days, if you're on a, a boat, a lake with a lot of boat pressure, like a lot of waves and stuff, mm -hmm. wakeboard boats and stuff, yep. bigger waves. Right. If you're hitting the waves wrong or can come They're right up over, over the them. top. Yeah. Yeah. Which isn't a big deal when you're on a bass boat, but when you have shitty shoes and you get wet feet, right. that's going to suck. Yeah. But if you have waterproof boots. Right. That are comfortable to stand in all day. Right. Because they're lightweight and they're made to be comfortable. So, yeah. Sounds like a winning situation to me. Yeah. And salt water too, because them boats don't have carpet typically. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The salt water. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Have like the plastic. Yeah. That plastic. Deck. Like that, yeah, that, yeah, that for shower sure. base that is yep. a deck on it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Boat. The whole deck boat is like, yeah, that shower base. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> um, And women too. Like they had a men and women version of that. I saw. They were good. Nice. What you so got? So the, the Zumverno was the other bait that I had. Zumverno. Um, that's Tell made more. by Shimano. Oh. And they have, uh, apparently that's like, they announced it, but this one, um, like is being sold everywhere already. But again, it's like a, they were talking about like the forward facing and stuff. Yeah. But it says it's a flash boost. Uh, flash boost. Ah, the flash boost jerkbait delivers unbelievable performance that will put more bass in your live well belt to provide a small and compact profile. It features a wide bill design that produces a lifelike swimming action on a straight retrieve and an incredible erratic side to side darting movement with enticing body roll to mimic a wounded feeling bait fish, whatever. So the Zumverno, <laughs> but the thing what that I wrote out down, for you? yeah, the weird slogan, <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I wrote because they had it. It says Arma Boost, Flash Boost, Scale Boost. And it like said that behind it. Okay. With no description. I was just <laughs> like, I don't know what the shit that is. I just wrote it down just to be like, cool. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> 
And even in this, it doesn't say anything about that. It just says flash. It does say flash boost. So I wonder if like those are what they call the freaking things. Because this one is the... I have no idea. I, the I Shimano Zumverno flash boost. Oh, like That's, if those so are just I the wonder, model names? I don't know, dude. <laughs> <laughs> If oh I put shit, in, that's funny. If I put in Arma Boost, what happens? If I put in <laughs> Shimano Arma Boost, Shimano Arma Boost. Oh, wait, that says Arma Joint. Oh, Arma so, Joint Flash Boost. Okay, still got nothing. That's that's like a swim bait. Okay. I don't know. Okay, but it's that says Arma Joint, but the other one said Arma Boost. They but got arm on everything, I guess. Maybe they just put that flash boost in everything. I don't know. Okay. Doesn't matter. Now, can I talk Weird. about more front-facing sonar stuff that I just don't, because I don't fully understand it? Maybe you can help me. Okay. Hey, I got to say that because <laughs> let's talk about that stuff. But also, there's a thing that's spelled O-H-U-K-R, and it's a tool to get hooks out of you. No way. Did you see that thing? No. Yeah, it's spelled, I don't know how you say it. It's like O-K-E-R, but that's why when you look like, I was just waiting for the moment to say that. You're like, can we? And I'm like, O-K-E-R. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, dude, it's it's got, you'll have to see it in action, but yeah, <clears throat> it has like a little hook thing on the bottom. Okay. And uh, the top has like a little fork. Like a like a meat fork, you okay. know, where it's just the two prongs, and you like put the thing on there and then like squeeze it, and it like pushes, like puts pressure to like disengage the barb, and then you just pop it out. No way. Yeah, dude. I don't. It looks. That's crazy. It looks like it's supposed to work pretty good, but then the dude has like a rubber arm, and when he pulled it out, it made a pretty good two sound, and I'm like, oh, dude, I don't know. <laughs> that doesn't, that doesn't that, necessarily sound like it came out clean. <laughs> so I don't know. They were they were doing it, <clears throat> and he they showed that it's supposed to work with even like a treble hook when you get two treble hooks in you. Oh no way! Yeah, that sounds but, horrible. <laughs> I don't know. That's what they're selling it. We'll have to see. Okay. I mean, maybe we'll see. okay. Maybe we'll see it in action. Uh, with somebody accidentally screwing up that has one, right? But I'm I'm thinking about getting one if it right like legit supposed to work. It seems like a good thing to have on hand, right? That was my biggest thing with my thumb was like I couldn't really get a hold of it to do anything else. If it literally is like one hand and it has a trigger that can grip it and rip right. it, you know, right? You were like, definitely, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that was the thing. Yeah. I got, um, yeah, let's hear it. I got Do It. Never heard of this brand before, but they're Do It. They're um they're like pour your own jigs thing. Like they make molds. Oh yeah, they won, right? Yeah, they won one. Um because they had these new molds that were really cool and everything. Yeah. And I was like, Yeah, these are cool. But I didn't I didn't like write down any of that. I was just like, I've never heard of them. Okay, make your own jigs. Sure, I yeah. get it. I don't know yeah. where you buy pounds of lead and <laughs> melt it down, but okay, good for you, whoever's out there doing it. That's awesome. If you if you are, hit us up. I want to hear about it. Um, but there was even front facing sonar talk at this booth. Like yeah. they were just like, "Hey, we have these molds and front facing sonar," and I'm just like, "Okay, so what? What? What is it like?" Sonar is something that goes bing and then it hits a submarine and it comes back World War II. I don't know. Like, what is the big, like, why was this like lead booth talking about front facing sonar? Is it because the lead shows up on the sonar yeah. and then on yeah. the screen? Like, yeah, it's because it's, it's like a return. So when it's basically, like think of it like it's shooting a sound wave out yeah and then it's basically sending an echo back okay and the harder surface or like the harder 
piece is sending back a better echo. Ah. So like when you're, yes. if it's like mushy, it doesn't so show up quite as well. Right. But there's other things that play a role, like we'll just transition into yeah. Z-Man. Yep, yep. And Z-Man has, um, I got pages and notes, dude. I just, I had a notepad. Like I'm talking about, like I was at work and I just kept flipping through this notepad. I didn't have yeah. I was using my phone for work, so I had to keep like grabbing my notepad. Right, right. But Z Man has the graph chat, literally called the graph chat. It's like made for like it's gonna be on your graph. It's oh, so okay, I yeah. get it. So it stays horizontal in the water. But here, I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, because we were talking about the the stuff. Uh, it says that everything in it is made to throw back a signal. So it has like the metal head on the front because it's, it's, it's the bait with the jig head, like put together already. Okay. I got you. And so it has like the metal head that's there, but then the body has like a, a hollow cavity because that air bladder will send back a signal as well. I heard some people saying that the air, it's so crazy to hear that the air bladder sends back a signal. I'm like, yeah. There was a long time ago when I was working in the car industry, there was a guy that came in and was like, hey, just so you know, like we have something coming out where you're going to be able to identify the fish based off of the air bladder. Like it's going to, the sonar is going to be able to recognize it. And then that must have been like not accurate enough because that guy was like a rep for whatever that was kind of like teasing it. Okay. And then it never came to fruition because obviously it must have just not been <laughs> like, they're like, they all have their own distinctive shapes oh. and then they must not have been distinctive enough where right. it's just like a big version of whatever fish reads as this and a small version reads as that yeah. kind of shit. Yeah. So anyways, but yeah, this, the swim bladder was showing up well enough back when the forward facing sonar was just starting to become a thing. Right. And the dude was like, yeah, this is going to happen. I'm like, that sounds crazy. It makes sense to me, but it never happens. So, <laughs> um, but anyways, that, so it, it has, they said that the scales too on the side are meant to like throw the signal back. Like Damn. everything's designed to throw the signal back. Yeah. Yeah. Like and they're made out one, of a material or angles or something like that. Yeah. That bounce it back. So yeah, so another crazy part about this bait is like when you're holding it, the like when you're holding it from the line when it's not in the water, the like jig head is a little bit higher than the backside. Okay. But because of the Z-Man's, they have like the elastomer stuff too. Okay. And that floats. It's when it's like stretchy like that, it's more buoyant. Oh, interesting. And it floats and that thing floats like perfectly horizontal when it's in the water, not just because of the floating back, but because of its unique through head line tie. Yeah. So you actually put the line through the top of the head and there's a tie on the bottom of it. Yep. So you put the line through the head and then knot it on the bottom and pull it tight. So the head comes through the top. Yeah. But the line tie is on the bottom. Yeah, dude. Isn't that wild? It, I couldn't. I, I have to see it. I can't. Like, I can't wrap my head around it. I just. It yeah. was crazy. Is this the Shadtron? I think it was called. Mm, this one's the Graph Shad. The Graph Shad? Okay. Yeah. The Shadtron. Um, maybe it's also called that they might be they might be the same thing just similar too i don't know for sure yeah. but either way we're talking about the same thing and i could not wrap my head around it like i saw Shadron. it was it or was is nuts, that the, dude i don't know if i had that in the notes or is that the big one now that might have been the bigger one because it's a, it says oh yeah so this is this is different but oh, i yeah, saw that there one. was like the there was like the mullet tron Right, last year was yes. I yes. think that was I the one that, that won everything. I'm sorry, I read my notes. No, you're wrong. good. I read my you're notes good. wrong because I read a through line. Yeah, yeah. My bad. Yes, no, I saw good. what you're talking about though. That thing, yeah. was so there's, cool. There's I didn't understand line. how it floated like that. <laughs> even after yeah, it, it being explained, yeah. even after you explaining it again, I look back at my brain and I just look at that thing in the water and I go, 
Isn't yeah, I wild? still don't. I and, still don't get it. I have to. And see that it. one, that one has a tail on it too. That's like two different flanges. And the guy was talking about how it's like different sizes or whatever. Yeah, actually caused them to like fight against each other in the water because it the the bottom is a little bit bigger and it's buoyant. Yep. So because of the bottom one being bigger it wants to like fight the other one so there's like movement to it with you doing nothing really yeah because it's trying to fight itself in the water <laughs> because of the buoyancy yeah. or whatever it was so it's nuts like, what the shit dude that sounds so sick that it's just sitting there and they're talking about that being with the forward facing so it's like very horizontal and you don't really have to move it much so it's almost like i mean you wouldn't be able to just like cast it out and leave it where it is. But the way it falls is like perfectly horizontal. Mm-hmm. So you can really get, you know, pick it up on the, on the graph and stuff. So it's just wild. Yeah. What they're coming out with, but that, that Shadtron is also a through line. And that thing's kind of cool because, Oh, excuse me. You can put a regular hook. So that comes out the top yep. or you can put the through line through, with the treble hook and it has like a little yeah. holder. Yeah. So you can put the treble on and it'll just kind of like clip on that holder. Yeah. And that way you can turn it. I thought that was cool. Cause some of them have the treble set up where you would actually like turn the treble and have one of the hooks upside down and kind of hook it into the bait. So you have two hooks on the bottom. Oh. And this one is making it so you can flip the hook the other way. So you have two hooks like along the body and one hook poking out the bottom. Oh, so all that's... three hooks have a chance at hooking up the fish. Yeah. Where you're essentially losing one of those trebles when you have to hook it into the fish. Normally, like yeah. on, on, on previous versions. Yeah. Because that's what I had noted yeah. down on that too was, dude, it has it has it. It's a through line, but it has a rig for the treble. Yeah. Like truly yeah, you can that. rig up a full treble on it. And I was, that was all I had. You had much more detail than, cause you understand it in a different way, but I was sure. like, yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's sick. Yeah. Like to, to see the, just the little subtleties where they're just like, what if we just put like a clip here? Right. And you're like, hell yeah, dude, that's so sick. Yeah. And then the Shadtron, I, if, people didn't know about last year's mulletron was like a big swim bait that they made for saltwater salt fishing, yeah which is what the mullet you know is a saltwater uh forage basically and then shad is what we have in the freshwater and yeah stuff like that so they just like adapted it right just, like yeah they adapted they said, it basically. yeah yeah just came out with like colors and made it make sense for freshwater yeah because i thought the mullet looked sick too but you're like well i mean it I bet it would work here, but it doesn't technically mimic what we have here. Sure. Except for it is a minnow style bait, you know, so it does kind of. But yeah, I'm sure. I shouldn't say I'm sure. I know that one of them, the I can't remember which video I was talking about, but they like literally were like, can we get this in like a shad? And that's (laughs) right. I think. And then they did immediately. (laughs) Immediately. I think the pros were just like, you know, or like ma- many of the fishermen where they're just like, we can't, here's the bullet chat. And then all the fresh water fishermen are just like the shit. <laughs> I want that thing too. Damn come it. Come on. Come on, dude. <laughs> yeah. On, on the Z man note. Yeah. What is, what are the, what do you know about their salt water and fresh water? Cause I got a salt, another salt water on here that I was just like, I was fucking stoked on, but oh. like, so yeah, I mean, before we get into to that, you said they made the Mulletron, but they forgot about yeah. the set Shadtron kind of in a way, right? Are they yeah. more saltwater heavy? Z-Man? Yeah. Or is no, it just sort just, of the perception just, that I'm getting? No, they're not saltwater heavy. They okay. just have a saltwater side to them. Okay, you sure. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Where maybe no, like Rapala or something doesn't really have a saltwater side, so you don't see it as much. But Z Man just has like they really right. have both. Yeah, they're, they're playing in both fields, like no problem. Right. Yeah. Z Man definitely has a big um, market in the saltwater, where mm-hmm. Rapala does a little bit, but it's not much. Right. You yeah. Know? It's not. Super it's insane. not the same. They're definitely freshwater driven, but I think some of these companies 
come from a like started in a state where you have the option of both and then you have like companies like Rapala where they started in freshwater and got big enough to where they're just like we are a fishing company maybe we should make maybe we should dabble market, in that salt water yeah, thing there's a market here we're not diving into right right you know yeah. so yeah so but what the yeah the one that i saw is that what you're yeah sorry. okay no is it like was it a shrimp or a prawn yeah, or whatever? Dude. the prawn star yeah dude yeah, that isn't that crazy sick? Crazy looking, man. I'm going to Florida. I think I'm ordering some of these things. That's oh. why I like iCast so much. Where hell yeah, this okay. I know we're talking about iCast, but we've been talking about like bucket list fish and shit. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. Uh -huh. there's a pier in like near Fort Lauderdale where I'm like we're gonna go mm -hmm. for our uh, Florida trip. Yep, and the pier you can like pay to go fish on. It's just like you pay like a a fee and you don't have to have like fishing license and stuff. Oh, there. sick. Yeah. It's so one of those. you can just go yeah. fish that pier. Mm -hmm. There's a camera. Even though it's public someplace. water, right? It's not like some weird. Right. Yeah. It's just like, hey, yeah. you're allowed to fish here because it's regulated and everything like that. Yeah, and exactly. It's like a special tax. specialty pier where they're just, yeah, they're like, yeah, this is, if you're on that pier, you're good. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Like you, if you paid your way, you got on the pier. Yeah, but there's a camera, an underwater camera that you can go and check out and watch fish and stuff. Oh, sweet. And my whole thing has been like, I want to catch a redfish. I haven't had to get, yeah. caught a redfish yet. And yeah. I want to try to go like inland and see if I can score a peacock bass. That would be sick. I hadn't even been thinking about what other fish they got on there. Mm -hmm. Clear as day, big ass school of snook Whoa. at that pier. Really? And I'm like, oh shit, dude, snook. I didn't even think about it. Snook. Lots of them. Snook. Yeah. Hell yeah. And I'm like looking at what other people are out there catching them on. And I literally just got a video that came across today where some girl uh, was out there, some lady. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> but was out there fishing and she just was using like a swim bait. And I'm like, oh, so they're just like predatorial and they're out there in the ocean. Okay. Obviously, they're going to hit a shrimp. I get a prawn star yeah. and I start jigging that off of this pier. I could catch all sorts of shit. I got to get one of these things. Yeah, dude. Because that's what we, when we went for reds uh, with that guide too, yep. he had shrimp. We were using live shrimp. And oh, then yeah, we that's were right. using those croakers. So we were literally just using good size like mulletron style baits yep and shrimp yeah and i I'm remember like, you saying like i literally the grocery store pick it up yeah <laughs> that was your i'm example. so yeah exactly and i'm so well versed now with icast in what is op, like an option yeah in the saltwater world right and i'm like i need to just put in an order and get this shit sent to my house right and I'll be ready to roll. And then you'll have it. Yeah, dude. Prawn, oh, fucking A. When you get those, take a picture. I'm excited. Oh, yeah. Those prawn stars were yep. crazy looking. And I was like, yeah, that that's good yeah. shit. That's good shit yep. for sure. Good stuff. What do you got? What else you got? All right. Let me. Where do I'm you want to go next? Because I got all I'm gonna go in, I'm going to go in order just so I'm like. So you got, yeah. You're a little more. So I'm making sure I'm here. not hopping all over the place because page one is done now. Okay. Bait fuel. You know about bait fuel? I don't. You know the the name is familiar, fuel? but I don't know. And I don't have any so, bait fuel in my notes. Okay. So bait fuel, you might have it underneath a different name here. Oh. So bait fuel is a company that makes like the scent by itself. And I have oh, yeah. bait okay. fuel. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a scent. Now... They came out with like a bunch of other scents, like the sticks. So it sounds like it's a little bit different. I don't know if they switched up the formula or if they just sell different versions of stuff. Okay. But I have bait fuel right now and I use the scent on my Northland, like new Northland stuff. Oh, okay. None of their soft plastics have scent. So I have the bait fuel to add scent to it. Okay. So that's what I do. And it's like, I think it's a water-based scent which is good because like the Northland claim that some of the oil based scents can like damage 
the mm-hmm. minnows mm-hmm. and stuff. And I think that's why they don't have their own scent on them. doesn't right. really matter. But I know about bait fuel. And bait fuel came out with a couple of new things. They have injectors now. Whoa. So, like, if you got, like, soft plastics, you can literally just, like, inject some scent into it. And they the, come, like, prepackaged know. in a syringe, essentially? Yeah. Look, Yeah. Like, little, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's and fucking I, cool. Yeah. And I don't know if they have, like, I would assume they have, like, refills where you can get, you know, your, like, sure little refill syringe or whatever. But, yeah. yeah. Or maybe you just have to buy a syringe because the it's not like a hypodermic needle or whatever you want to call it. It's just like a thing to right. stick into. So maybe it's something that they just doesn't cost a lot to yeah, make that. Like they just versus, found a real cheap way to manufacture that yeah. injector case right. package, whatever yep, you want to call it. To come with that instead of the, you know, plastic bottle that comes in. Right. Like they're just like, we'll just give you this. It's almost the same price. Not right. a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. So they came out with that. And then they also came out with a whole line of soft plastic baits. They make themselves called Hextech. Oh, really? So they used to yeah. just be a scent company, and now here they are. Boom. It's a scent company that just basically came onto the scene, too. I oh. don't think they've been around for that long. Yeah. Yeah, so like I got bait fuel maybe like two years ago okay. when I started seeing them advertising on the like Bassmasters heavy. Okay. And I actually like um Omnia was having that like watch along thing. Okay, yeah. You know, and they kept like real time putting up what the baits being used were and how you could get the baits and like the bait fuel kept popping up. And I'm like, oh yeah, let me let me get at some of that scent because I know I got a couple of baits. I definitely like to have scented stuff. I don't know why i said scented so slow scented stuff <laughs> that was weird that bothered me but i definitely like to have scented stuff over non-scented stuff uh-huh. so part of me when i'm fishing soft plastics that don't have scent i'm just like obviously i'm not getting bit because they don't stink <laughs> you know where it's like it probably would get bit but the confidence isn't there for me because i'm just thinking the whole time like yeah i wouldn't yeah, like need it, your own head it, about it. Like, i need it to fucking smell I need it to stink, bro. I need it to stink. <laughs> but so the hex tech, again, for facing sonar. Oh, yeah. The baits of these things are actually hexagonal shaped. Okay. Yep. So it's, you know, like what a hexagon is. So the flat sided of the bait, instead of it being rounded, yeah. is supposed to send back a better signal. Oh. According to this guy that was running the thing. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I haven't. You know, I didn't hear anybody tr- claiming this except for the guy that was running the booth. Right. So not saying that he's a liar. It's just not coming from a pro. It's just a guy right. running the booth. So yeah, we'll have but to al- see. Almost it always, makes sense though. When the stuff that they give their salespeople, sometimes salespeople can exaggerate. Like once they once they get to the floor. Yeah. Because they're not really like advertising. Because there's such thing as false advertising in America. It's a real thing. You can get in trouble mm-hmm. for it, but yep. to give them, you know, to put, to give credit to it all is yeah. these companies are doing research. They're they They have yeah. a front facing sonar in a fish tank and they're, they're putting bait in there. And then they're like, that mold didn't work. Fucking try a different one, you know? So like, right. I trust this. Yeah. The it's only cool. I'm, I'm, I don't think that they're lying at all. I'm just, the only thing I'm saying is that like, it could be very minimal. Right, where they're yeah. not lying, yeah. but it's just a sales pitch. It could just, be, just go. Yeah, technically, it did. Put it on the package, you know. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. so you got that hexagonal bait, and That's then cool. all over the body is like hexagonal shapes that are kind of like in the mold, where it almost looks kind of like a honeycomb yeah. on uh-huh. like the bodies itself, and they are already pre-rigged with their bait fuel and this one the guy claims cool. that they are uh water based and it doesn't stink like you don't really even smell it when you're like holding it up but when it's in the water they were showing with like a black light that you could see like it was coming the off scent was leaving and the really? fish can smell it yeah but it's like wow. that's kind of crazy i didn't know like that you could make it smell just for them because I always kind of judge a thing when I open up the pack and I'm just like, ooh, right. 
that one's catching the fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or is it? Yeah. Or were they saying that it releases once it gets in the water, and then once you pull it out, it smells again? You know what I'm saying? Like, does no, it have yeah. this like water soluble coating over it until you toss it in, and then after that, it reeks? Or no? I don't think so. I think okay. he was literally saying like it doesn't stink. You don't have to worry about it getting stinky. Huh? That's pretty but, yeah. crazy. Anyways, they do have um. So they have, I wrote it down here. Oh, here it is. They have the Rascal, <laughs> the Eco Shad, which actually has a pretty cool tail. Look Another on one it. with a cool tail. The tail isn't as cool. Uh, like, so if you were to say, like, this pencil was the... um the body the body like of the fish. This, yeah a pencil just this was the sideways. very yeah so this was the very back of the tail okay like, it it's almost like like where maybe it's better to visualize this okay okay visualize a minnow yep and then you got the head and you're going towards the back and then you got the tail yep go up to where the butthole is yep Visualize a minnow butthole. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got it. Yep, well drawn. And like right there, it's like deep cuts that go almost to the spine. Oh, so it's almost like it, like you could like on really either flip, side like, of the of the spine, top and bottom. No, it, it, like if it goes from the bottom from to the, bottom, the top, where it's to like the spine, cuts the all very the way top of it. Yeah, yeah. The the very top is minnow, like the part okay. that's yeah, still. Yeah attached yeah yeah but yeah. it's like it's gonna make because of how it's not completely one piece there yeah it's gonna it's, wiggle i think it's gonna make that tail really move well yeah yeah so like i'm it. really curious to see how that moves that's cool so yeah it's that rascal which i forget i should have wrote down what that was but you guys can look into this i'll i'll have it also on the Instagram thing, because I forget what that one was. But it's the Rascal, the Eco Shad, the Big Boar, which is like a a kind of a creature bait, I think it was. An Eco Craw, Crawfish. Mm. Does it have those the, slits in it too? Um, They all have that like honeycomb deal oh, to okay. it. Yeah, so the Eco must the mean slit. something else that's not... Because you said yeah. Eco Shad and Eco creature and i was right. like okay or eco yeah crawl. and eco might be like an acronym or whatever oh sure where it's like every cock okay <laughs> <laughs> i'm just trying to think of what it is. <laughs> I don't know. and then and then the blip minnow which looked like it was more of a drop shot style minnow where it looked like the tail was a little bit thicker, but I didn't get a real good look at that. But I'll try to find some photos and make sure everybody knows. And then the whip tail shad. Oh no, the whip tail shad was that one. The blip minnow is different. Damn, dude, there's three different shads: a whip tail shad, wow. an eco shad, and a blip minnow. That's crazy. But anyways, that's their line of stuff. I'll put the pictures on there, and you you'll be looking. At and them what was the like, name of the company again? Uh, Hex Tech was the name of those baits and bait fuel. Is Bait Fuel is the, the company, company yeah, behind the all company. of it. Yep. Yep. That's cool. So that's uh that's that. Let's shift gears into a different thing because we I think we'll just keep hopping back and forth to baits and stuff, so we don't just keep talking about baits. We're oh, yeah, take good a break idea. from baits. Good again. idea, Tim. Okay. This is neat. Cast King yep. already had the eye reel. Now they have the iReel 2. Oh, shit. The iReel 2 looks fucking sick. <laughs> so. Okay. 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 Let's hear it. First off, like now, it, at first I was like, that's cool to know, but I wasn't really thinking of the applications. But now with all the different sonar applications out there, you got forward facing sonar where mm -hmm. if you got a good feel at how far things are, you got like. The 360 imaging, maybe you got mm. side imaging, maybe you got, and mm. maybe you're marking some stuff on your sonar and you know that like, oh, I have it set, you know, to scan 75 feet that way. And it's a little over halfway. So you're thinking, you know, like 
it's well we'll do 100 feet so it's easier yeah i got it scanned to 100 feet i see a fish in the middle it's 50 feet away i know it's 50 feet away mm -hmm. the i reel too in real time can tell you how far you casted and it'll audibly yes. tell you that stuff so you what? know that you got a fish 50 to feet it'll talk to you if you have it linked up to like your headphones or they have some sunglasses i want to say maybe it was ray-ban i can't remember the brand i don't want to throw out the brand because i can't remember mm -hmm. but they had glasses that also had speakers on them, like speakers in them yeah so it'll audibly tell you that stuff so you can cast and it'll be like 10 feet 45 feet 20 like, feet. Fuck, i'm five feet short right where i need to be oh, okay you it's not as you're throwing it, it it's not counting down but once you stop it'll tell you yeah, it's like after you cast it, it'll tell you yeah. the speed of the cast and how far you cast it. And if so, you watch it, if you look down at the iReel 2 while yeah. it's casting, so it yeah, it's telling you each foot by it's foot. It's telling you this stuff, and it's telling you this stuff because on board on these reels, it has a processor oh on the inside God. being able to calculate this stuff. Well, what this processor also can do that is, so is it runs the electronic breaking of the bait caster no way yeah so Whoa. when it runs that electronic breaking it's they made it seem like it's not 100 percent foolproof sure but they said that you can like somebody was asking about it about being able to skip something and he said the guy running the booth was just like yeah uh, you can actually tell it that you want to skip and it's going to make it so you can skip like your favorite pro. Whoa. Like, so you'll be able to skip a bait with a bait caster and not have to worry as much about backlashing because the electronic brake system will be able to work fast enough and smart enough that it'll be able to like, if you hit the water too fast, it'll be able to like calculate like that. that yeah. We need to slow it down before it backlashes like crazy. No way dude yeah Holy and here's the thing shit, dude. so for for it to be able to tell you the like, casting distance and stuff and be able to connect bluetooth that you do need to make sure that it's charged up before you go out and cast right but some people were thinking that the electronic braking was something that you also had to charge so they're like why do i even want to buy this if i don't have it charged it's not going to work it charges that part of itself Every time you reel in. Oh my God. Isn't that it needs sick? so little power <laughs> that your power. <clears throat> you cranking is it is like a regenerating. That. Yeah. Oh that, my God. That's recharging the, the oh, part dude. that runs the electronic braking. That is amazing. And that's, <laughs> I thought that was so sick. Yeah. Cast King's coming out with some really oh cool my stuff. Oh my God. That's fucking cool, dude. I, I think it's only a matter of time before Cast King isn't like just an e-commerce website business anymore because like that's how they bring their stuff to the market. But okay, we'll see, dude. I I have a Cast King bag that I bought now. I got a new bag. Okay, that holds eight trays on the outside, and then around the front, there's four pockets that I put the smaller size trays in. Okay. I'm so organized. I love that bag so much. <laughs> I've only used it a couple of times, but it's so good. And it's, it's the orange is their main color. Yep. So I have that. And then I have, um, the rod holder, their rod holder is like offset with, you have all the spots on the bottom, you know, where the bottom of the rod goes. Yep. They took that same platform, raised it up like six inches and offset it. Okay. So when you put all your rods on the rack, uh -huh. when they're close together, the reels start running into each other because they're all about the same height. Yeah. If you offset every other one six inches up, all the rods can be way closer to each other and you don't have to worry about it because the rods are skinny, but the reels are the problem. So right, if you right. offset them, you can, yeah, that they make good cool. shit. No yeah. kidding. And I, I got my nephew. I told, I talked about that on a different a podcast where I got my nephew a reel that's a two piece reel yeah. that comes with two different power blanks on the end. Mm -hmm. 
So he has a rod that's a medium or a medium heavy, right. depending on what he wants to throw. Yeah. It's just ready to roll. Yeah. That's casting. And yeah. And yep. Casking and at iCast, they had a $5,000 all gold reel. No way. For, I didn't see just that. Just for fun. Yeah. Just for fun. I don't think they even sold it. <laughs> someone probably bought yeah. it. By the time the show is over, oh. I bet you someone bought it. Dude, Hood Fishing was talking about getting it. There's a guy that he goes, I think it's called like Hood Fishing. He's got gold grills. Yeah. And the top and the bottom, and he's holding it up. And he's like, This thing costs $5,000. That's almost as much as my teeth. He's like, I, Maybe I should. He's like, Maybe you'll see Hood with one of these someday. <laughs> what y'all think? <laughs> That's yeah. Awesome. I love yeah. that. It's got yeah. so much as my teeth. <laughs> it costs as much as my teeth. <laughs> yes. Yep. So yeah, that's what I had uh, for casking. But I just thought that was so sick when you have not just the whole reel sounds dope as shit, but to be able to know that like I need to make a 50 yeah. foot cast yeah, and it can tell you you made a 50 foot cast right. is like hell yeah. That's on the money. so fucking good. I got yep. an electronic that Rapala, I was like, oh. Oh, I might. I think I might have missed that. They had a scale. It oh, was, yeah? It wasn't that big of a deal. I didn't even get the name of the scale because I didn't okay. care Okay. <laughs> what the name of the scale was. They just yeah. had a scale with a versus mode in it, dude. Oh, dude. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. I was just versus. like, ready? Fart. <laughs> like, Fine. Go. That's all I thought when I saw that. And I was like, oh, yeah, I just got to write that down. <laughs> Test your might. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was great. I was just like, yeah, man. Scale with versus mode. I love it. Yeah, buddy. They didn't say it like that. That's how I interpreted it, though. Right, right. <laughs> versus. Yeah. Why the hell else think... do you have two players on one scale? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of cool. They like you and the other guy are in the boat. Yeah. So you can go your versus mode. Yeah. I feel like you could probably figure that out yourself but it is a cool deal i wonder if it like does anything cool like say ready like you got you put in one yours you put in the yours lead. and then you put like finish yeah and then it's like just the eight bit noises <laughs> yeah <laughs> just like player one wins and then <laughs> like player two and then it's just like <laughs> 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 The weird fireworks from the yeah. 8 bit era. <laughs> he loses or whatever. <laughs> or the wall crumbling. Yeah. I was thinking of like bombs, but yeah, oh, fireworks yeah. are our bombs. Right. And 8 bit, <laughs> they're all the same. That's very true. That's very, very true. <laughs> Just blowing up. Um, Let's see. Soft metal bait with a lip. That one, Jackal. Did you see the Jackal soft bait to go oh. back to baits real quick? Yeah, let's it was talk a soft bait with a lip on it, and that was it. That was just all I had yeah. to say about that. I was like, that yeah. was rad, dude. Yeah, that soft bait with the lip. I think it's more like it's not made to be fished like a jerk bait. It was again <laughs> kind of like a forward facing sonar style thing. Oh, okay. Did you? Okay. Yeah. So they were talking about that. I didn't pay attention as close because he was also talking that there was like a pocket in there that you could put like your like a pin weight or whatever, which again, okay. sticking a little chunk of metal in there would also help you get a return. Obviously we're talking about the metal throwing back. Yeah. Yeah. Time. Yeah. Yep. But it would like weight the bait in the front. I think if you wanted to a little bit, depending on how you wanted to throw it. But yeah, that one, um, I don't want to say a lot about because I don't, I didn't really pay attention too much, but I, I heard them talking about it a lot and I just forgot to go back and check that one out but i did get down the the spoon i don't know if i wrote down i don't think i wrote it down though okay but i there's spoon. oh i did right there what did i write i saw jackal jackal where was it <laughs> quick where's jackal jackal the spoon where's... yeah i didn't write down what it was but oh, it okay. goes backwards the spoon? The, uh, oh, as really? it as it falls it'll go backwards so like one of the guys 
that was talking about it, one of the examples that he gave was like when they go to a rock wall or whatever mm-hmm. with the forward facing sonar, now they're starting to see that when they use the forward facing sonar, they're actually able to see the pockets on this wall and like see where like stuff could be hiding that they didn't really realize was there before. Whoa. And now they have this spoon that they can cast out like towards the wall and uh-huh. kind of like let it flutter. Uh-huh. And when they like pull it up and let it fall backwards, it'll actually like go backwards into that cavity. Really? But also with the forward facing Damn. sonar is if they see something on the, the sonar, you know, out there yeah. when the fish is there, they're able to keep it in the strike zone longer. So like a, that kind of a flutter spoon is like, you're kind of like pulling it up and you're letting it flutter down. So normally when you're working a spoon like that, you'd be pulling it towards you. When you let it fall down, it would just fall down. Okay. And then every time you lift the rod, you pull it towards you again. Yeah. This one, you're lifting it up away from where they are, but it's falling back down to back that. into it. So they're just kind of like where if you cast over them, you're pulling it up and let it, and it fall right back down to the fish. Pulling it up, Whoa. letting it fall right down to the fish. Yeah, so you just That's, keep popping it and letting it go. How the they figure that out? Smart dudes over in Japan. <laughs> Some of no them. No <laughs> shit. Yeah. Jackal's a Japanese company that they are, okay. um, back in the day, I was always like, this is crazy prices. And now oh, like okay. the rest of the market is like caught up to them. And now they're not as crazy anymore. Oh, okay. It's like they've just been making that quality for that that long yep. that now everybody's putting the money into making like high quality stuff. Yeah. And now they're more in the market of what everything used to be. Like I used to right. look at some of the jerk baits, you know, that Rapala makes and you're just like, Oh, it's like six ninety nine. Yep. And then you look at Jackals and it's like fifteen ninety nine. And you're like, what the holy fuck? shit? Well, I'm going to spend fifteen ninety nine. And now you look at like the high end, good quality stuff that's made with all the good quality components yeah and you're like oh they're all this much now <laughs> so it's like <laughs> right right all right yeah jackal i sorry i judged you i was like <laughs> back back when i first got introduced to him my kid brain was just like god damn it costs a lot to get shit from japan <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know it cost that much to get it right. from overseas that's nuts right right oh man important shit's expensive yeah. like that was, Meanwhile, that was kind of where yeah. your kid brain just kept it right yeah exactly <laughs> meanwhile like all the video game stuff and all the tvs and stuff none of that's right a higher markup than any of the stuff that was made here in america <laughs> right 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 <laughs> <laughs> just like not putting two to two together just being like damn fishing stuff from japan is just it's i can't just afford crazy. to get it shipped over here <laughs> i can't i have a in-show correction i must do oh and it takes us away from baits again so we can you can throw out one if you got it but i fucked up on the Shimano. Oh. Everything we said about the the drag and the all that, that was the cool thing that was going on there. So basically yeah. everything you said was right. It's not the one that's made out of this carbon resin. That's a Daiwa mm-hmm. product that's made oh. out of the carbon resin. The Soul MQ reel from Daiwa. They have a special yeah. name for this. It, the body of it is made of Zeon, Z A I O N, Zeon, Zeon, a high density resin and carbon material. He said it was light as fuck. I bet that sound that's so it was Daiwa that, that's making that carbon resin, whatever that word was. Sounds like it should come with a sound effect. <laughs> yeah, it does. Zeon, I don't have one queued up, <laughs> just the sound of a bottle rocket. <laughs> That's it. Just, just the, the whistling ones. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> just leave people confused. It's made of Zion. <laughs> That's really good, though. <laughs> so sorry, Daiwa. My bad. Sorry, Whoops. listeners. I goofed. I read my notes wrong. Sorry about it. I hope I don't read this note wrong. David Dudley's digger blade. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) I see what you're saying there. That was close. (laughs) Several ways that could have gone wrong. Yep. I got it. (laughs) 
What is this? So this is a little bit, uh, just one real quick thing that I thought was kind of cool. I don't know who this person is. I don't know if they had their own little like bait. There's another uh, gentleman that does like fish and stuff. And I was seeing his on the, on the YouTube shorts and he brought this up oh, from okay. uh, being an iCast i cast bait so i haven't looked into it a lot mm -hmm. but i do like the idea of it so uh it has a runner jig head so What's a that? runner jig head is like okay. kind of a like a right angle oh like the jig head kind of comes um like if you have the hook yeah and coming forward from the hook where you would have the jig yeah normally like there's the eye nor like just like normal Okay. But from the eye, the lead also goes down and kind of has like a weird Whoa. nose to it. Whoa. But it almost works kind of like, I think about it like the the rudder on like a sailboat. Okay. Where it stops it from flipping over. Oh. You know? And yeah. And they put, they put a bladed uh, jig head, like a chatterbait. Okay. On one of those. And that on the looks extension? cool, to, or just like on well, that rig as a whole. You would put it. You would put it on there, because it's like, um, okay. here. So, chatterbait has like your jig head, right? Okay. And then you have the blade that comes off of the jig head. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, it's just a blade off so the it front was of like, the jig. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like that blade. With the jig head, and then the jig head just comes down a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So, and I think the main part that's cool about that is if you get it to a decent weight and you really want to burn that thing, uh -huh. I think you can crank it as hard as you want and you don't ever have to worry about it really rolling because oh. of, like, it won't roll over on you. Because of that extension on the jig. Yeah. Nice. So, I don't know if people are having problems with that ever. But I would assume that that's the main reason that you would make something like that. Right. So if you're having problems with your jigs rolling over and you want to try something different, there you go. There that's it the is. Thing. Yeah. David Dudley's that, got you. David Dudley's got that digger blade. Watch out. Uh, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the Gomexis is the next one I got on the list. What's this? Uh, Gomexis is a brand that makes a uh, swim bait called the cyberbait 210f whoa that's a fancy and, name yeah and this one is the i don't know really the significance to this other than i think it would show up pretty well on your forward facing sonar uh -huh. and if it has rattles in it which i am not familiar with uh it might have a pretty cool sound to it because it is claiming that it is the world's only full metal swim bait really yeah so it's a hard swim bait and it's full metal wow it's like two pieces and it's full metal whoa so i don't know who makes it again because i remember the name i wrote that shit down Go cyberbait Mexus. 210 f whoops cyberbait 210 f yeah i've never heard of them gold nexus Gold. Huh. go mexus go okay, okay. go mexus go mexus go <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah we're 90s ninja turtle kids what about it uh yeah. you got another bait mm, i got a lot of baits i got a lot of because i'm gonna jump into to... some line then because i want to get some like, hell to, yeah to dude, do the jump switch into up that. your real time show running that you did there i'm like all right let's yeah, switch it up i like it suffix had a braided line a new braided line yep for again here it is even the line companies yep a new braided line for throwing into the wind with your forward facing sonar. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm like, what does that mean, Tim? <laughs> well, like so, a line company is now going like front forward face sonar. We got you. Yep. So the thing with that is they're, they're talking about like with the forward facing sonar, you want to be able to throw the bait where you want to throw the bait. So it's basically mm -hmm. like, to me, it's like forward-facing sonar is just the buzzword these days. Okay. So I was starting like, to wonder that after this. It, it's literally like you just want to be able to throw into the wind, and it doesn't really matter 
with your forward facing sonar. I know your forward facing sonar is pointing at fish, mm-hmm. but like also your setup on fishing. I think it, I think it also helps that like, it's hard to have the wind at your back mm-hmm. fishing the forward facing sonar right, where it's right. easier to control the boat with your nose pointed towards the wind. Gotcha. So, I mean, maybe that's where they're coming off. With that's it, where they're getting the forward facing sonar. Like, yeah. Buzzword into their yeah. sales pitch. Okay. Yep. But basically, I mean, they're talking about being able to cast into the wind, which right. is going to help. That's what it just breaks and down to. Like get the forward yeah. facing sonar buzzword off of there and just right. think about it like this. I yeah, feel you. Casting, yeah. being able to cast into the wind for whatever reason you have to cast into the wind for. Yeah. Um. So it's like a super small diameter line. Mm-hmm. And it, they're claiming that it um, really eliminates wind knots. Oh. And wind knots are basically, you know, like you're casting and it can cause issues. Like it'll backlash because the wind's really catching it or mm-hmm. it'll like kind of, you know, knot up on you because the wind is doing what the wind does. Yeah. But your line super down. small diameter line isn't getting caught by the wind as much. Oh, okay. Okay. And it makes everything like more sensitive and stuff you could feel the bait better and sure like d- having a, s- a smaller diameter line okay. at the same strength is like a the same if you can achieve a smaller diameter and still have the same strength there's no reason you would want to go bigger always oh. want to go smaller the okay. smaller you can go the better uh-huh it'll make your baits run more true there's less drag for the line in the water. So it's like just a whole bunch of benefits to having a very small diameter. And that's why gotcha. that one won the new line. I can't. And trophy. didn't, doesn't Best that mean something about finesse fishing too? Well, yeah, the, the finesse makes it, you know, when you downsize your line, mm-hmm. when you're going like, I, I'm just going to give an example here. Cause I don't know the exact number. Sure. But like a 20 pound braid Mm -hmm. is like the equivalent of like a six pound mono. Okay. So like when you're going that small, so like when you're talking, uh, if you were going to go down to like a six pound test in this, the line you're dealing with is going to be like thread. Yeah. Like you almost won't see it. Okay. Yeah. So it'll be so small. And like with no stretch, that's one thing that braided line brings to the table is that there's no stretch. So you really feel the bait well when it's on the bottom. Oh, okay. And when and that's finesse small, fishing, the, like that's, is that what yeah, finesse well, fishing is? Being like, able to, really. being able to feel it and stuff. But when you have like a small bait mm-hmm. and sometimes when it's windy, you can't really get away with it, but you can get a small bait down lower when you're, when your line is thinner diameter oh yeah it makes it easier to get it down deeper gotcha so yeah finesse is just kind of a lot of times just like downsizing in every way possible okay (laughs) sorry my light just jumped and i'm like what the flying fuck was that i thought it was coming down but it was just one of the umbrellas popped loose of things so it's all good it's not gonna fall okay sorry that's good i know no, okay no so i kind I of maybe there's something coming through your ceiling yeah i thought <laughs> I was that like, fucker oh, was shit. coming down so i just I had buzzed. to stare at it i was watching i was like what's about to happen <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so I, I guess i kind of missed the end of it but you said in the beginning of the podcast too finesse fishing is like a big thing right now too yeah uh, finesse are, fishing yeah um, going to that so yeah what you what you got we got to kind of start doing rapid fire shit dude Oh, hell yeah. So we'll we'll transition into the X zone real quick. Came out with a whole line. Yeah. Came out with a whole line of stealth finesse series, which is, I don't need to get in all the different baits and stuff and rapid fire it, but like it's transition. It's literally just like a whole line of like small baits. They're just like, not just like we came out with one small bait. They're just like, we made a bunch of small baits and we know how you fuckers like finesse. (laughs) (laughs) Who was that? That did that? I missed nobody. It. That was me. No, no. Who did the? Who was the company that did that? You said. Oh, X Zone. X Zone. That's right. We're getting into the X Zone. 
Yeah. <laughs> Fly away I'll let you go again. <laughs> All right. Uh, booyah. Got the flashpoint suspending jerk bait. Has a blade embedded yes. in its forehead. In its forehead. Like Lil Uzi. <laughs> like Lil Uzi? Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't know he did that. What the fuck? Didn't there, wasn't that Lil Uzi Vert got like a freaking yeah. big ass gem? Like a gem thing in his, his forehead? Yeah. yeah, that was probably him. I thought it was him. I believe you. I just don't. I don't know. I don't follow Uzi that close. I know obviously who he is and shit. I just remember. Yeah, that was him. Stupid weird shit. <laughs> yeah, a, it didn't. Booyah yeah. Bates done released the little Uzi. Got the little Uzi <laughs> forehead. <laughs> Let it, Google it. I don't know if that one's gonna be put on Instagram. For the little Uzi Vert, maybe I should. <laughs> but, <laughs> Just do a split, like a, like a side by side. Side, side by shit. side. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that Uzi. thing is right in the forehead of that jerk bait. Yeah. And it's a, uh, that blade's going to give it the flash, you know, like to have that piece of metal. So you're like popping it back and forth and it's just flashing and stuff. In also a weird again, spot, too, that like a metal doesn't get seen really. You know what I mean? Like, who else well, has that? Who else has like a sparkle right there on the forehead of the fish? Right, a shine. Yeah, a, that's a true. Reflector it's kind of it's kind of nose down. Like, so if you're like pouring, moving it towards a bait, and when you're jerking it, it's kind of like moving it for backwards and forwards. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So like the fish will see it, but you know, it's I, nobody else has really done it. There's a couple of different things yeah. that have been like nobody's done it this year. Uh, real fast, handing M1 top water. They made a couple of different baits handing. Weirdest shit I've ever. I don't know what the fuck. It's weird. I don't. Maybe it catches fish, but they came out with like a top water and a crankbait and something else. But all of the baits are like a a bait fish getting ate by another fish. Are the baits? Yeah, I saw like those. I didn't. Water re- I like, didn't write down the brand though. What the hell, dude? Yeah, handing top water is like a like a sunfish getting ate by a fucking alligator. Oh, I didn't it's see like, that one. What the yeah, fuck? It's dude? like a sunfish on the front and then like an alligator eating the sunfish. And then there's like a prop <laughs> behind it. And it's just like, what the, f- I'm, I guess maybe it's just like a novelty. Like I'm sure it catches yeah. fish, but I don't know why you would design it. So it looks like an alligator eating a fish. <laughs> Cause like, what fish is trying to eat the alligator that's trying to eat the other fish? Yeah. A big one, I guess. <laughs> I, yeah. And I was going to say, I get the, I, I get it because I saw some too. And it was like, oh, it makes this bait fish look like it's getting eaten by a bigger fish. So I'm like, okay, so you're going for the other fish. You're playing the old food chain move there. I can yeah, see that. I, guess. I can see that working. The alligator Except thing. Though, I didn't see. Small. I don't know. Alligator is big. I don't know. I don't know. Way how bigger than would work at all, but. Yeah, alligator's way bigger than okay. small fish. Okay. Uh, alligator, I don't know, dude. It's weird. I didn't get it. Maybe it works fine. I don't know, but I don't understand their whole reasoning behind it. <laughs> Reef Runner. On to the Reef Runners. Reef Runner came out with two different. They came out with a lipless crankbait and a regular uh, uh, crankbait, a bigger one. Reef Runners are kind of known well in like the walleye uh, community because oh. the... The reef nice. runner, the bigger minnow has like a real wide wobble to it. Okay. And then I didn't even know they were making uh, the lipless crankbaits. I only know them for their bigger baits. But they came out with baits that have like a bunch of little mirrored squares all over the side of it. Oh. So it has like crazy flash. Really? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you said mirrors and you like. Yeah, literally it. like. Yeah, it looks like little gems. Whoa. So transitioning into like little gems, but they're little mirrors, but they're like the same colored mirrors as whatever the body of the bait is. You know, oh. so if it's like a purple one, you got like purple. Really? Unless it's like just like a glass that like shows the color behind it, but whatever it happens but whatever to be, it is, same concept. it's the same color. Yeah. So it's like just these little mirrored squares on the sides of the bait that are like flash like a motherfucker. Whoa. So I'm excited about that because i think that's really cool that is cool all right let's go uh since i'm been been talk, let's let's go gamagatsu yeah we might have to go yeah. rapid fire just a bunch of baits at the end yeah okay but um the gamagatsu 
came out with a King Cobra jig. Whoa, what's and that? it's like a skirted jig. And like from the bottom, it literally like is shaped like a cobra head. Oh, no way. Is it? So, it, yeah. So it looks sick, but it's like flat on the bottom and it's kind of like curved a little bit. Yeah. So um, I don't know like that flat when it's falling through the water, if it would like create it to shimmy. And I would think that it would like sit well and like give you like good bottom feel because the it's not going to be like round where it's a little bit kind of like it's going to like sit and it'll sit well okay on the bottom like once it gets to the bottom you know it's not a rounded jig head that's going to fall and like tip over it's going to just sit and stay so i'm sure it has its own place but i mean at the very least i thought it looked cool as shit i think the cobra heads are cool looking right yeah i mean anything that's like cobra head shaped you're kind of like that's fucking rad right (laughs) yeah i know they're like the gi joe's the cobra is supposed to be the bad guy and you're like but he looks so but that fucking logo is so kick ass. They're, they're so cool. That's the coolest bad guys in the world. Tell me if this is something new from Gamagatsu. They had the hydrol, a hook with the swivel built Ooh. in. Like it just had uh, a swivel on the tip. Like instead of, you know, instead of like tying a swivel on and then putting a hook in the swivel. Oh, they just had a fucking had a swivel. swivel. The eye of the hook was oh. a swivel. And I was like, oh, huh. oh shit. They call it the Hydro. That's, that sounds new. The Hydro. Yeah. That's a good name. Isn't it? <laughs> I didn't. It is. I didn't know that, dude. Yeah. That shit was rad. That's cool. Oh, I got to. I got to come. Uh, I, I'd say this real quick. Berkeley. Yep. What they Berkeley got? has the Kredge. I had teased this a couple of weeks ago. The Kredge is what I was talking about with yeah. a whole new way of fishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Kredge has the inverted blade. It's a jerk bait that you work up. Whoa. Like a jerk bait normally floats on the surface, and when you pull it, it goes down. Yeah. And that's like the digging motion. This one is sinking. Yes. And it'll like sink backwards. So you cast it in and it will sink backwards like the like the spoon I was talking about that Jackal makes. And oh, it'll yeah. sink backwards and you jerk it and it'll do its whole like swimming and jerking motion you can pop it upwards and then you can let it fall back to the fish and then you can pop 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 away from it and then let it fall back to the fish again yes this is the one i had written down too and i was just like swims up with a reverse lip i'm like what is it now that you're saying it it's like oh dude yeah that's you have to like it falls backwards you have to re it's like playing a fucking track in mario kart in mirror mode you have to figure that shit out again it's familiar but it's not Right. Am I wrong like, with that? Like, am I just, would I? No, it's like, it's like that, but adding in like inverted controls. <laughs> it's. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit, dude. Cause it, instead of like a jerk bait, you kind of like pop the rod tip down. Now you're popping it up like a jig. Wow. That, you know, it, yeah. it's completely backwards. Right. Everything's backwards. Right. It's weird. And then you have to think about what it's doing in the water too yeah. so that you're fishing it right. Wild. But I don't think it's, I think you just got to, in this case, you're almost just thinking about like working it like a different bait. You're right. not working okay. it like a jerk bait anymore. But like yeah. Yeah. the jigging minnows too, the Rapala like that have been around forever mm-hmm. where like it was the ice fishing bait at one point and then they came out with a bunch of different kinds of it. Okay. But it has like the the tre- the hook on the front and the back and then the treble hook on the bottom. Yep. And you pop that thing and it just like kind of darts all over the place. Oh, okay. They came out, Berkeley came out with another minnow that kind of works the same way, but it's just a minnow bait where like the there's no lip on it or anything and the, the tie is set farther back. Um oh. like behind the head kind of instead of on the front yeah so when you pull it it just kind of like pulls it up and it jerks and it kind of does that same thing whoa and then uh i'll just get right into the yoziri real quick because that's kind of the same thing so it felt like both of them did the same thing as yoziri made a ldxr flat heavy minnow is what they're calling it and i don't know i don't think these float or like sink backwards But the Yoziri sinks about one and a half to two feet a second, (laughs) which is which is kind of close to like what the I think the jigging minnow sinks even faster than that. Like the Rapala one, when you toss it in, Uh 
I mean, if I'm like in 15 feet of water, I count like to like three, four seconds before I start walk, working it back Jeez. in because I'm almost at the bottom. They just dive down That's heavy as shit and they just dive. But this one I thought was really cool. I wrote it down because they came out with an 80, a 60 and a 40 size. The 80 size is like a good like three and a half inch minnow okay that 40 size has got to be like just over an inch and if it's Whoa. heavy it looks like an awesome thing to be casting out there kind of working around for uh crappie and stuff right Pan yeah fish. that's what i was thinking yeah Maybe crappies so even or without perch or something yep so it has like a big like good flash again all this stuff talking about the forward facing but i think a lot of these you'd be able to go out there and work without the forward facing i'm out there casting that minnow without forward facing having good luck on those so i think a lot of this stuff yeah you can go out and use with like that the the credge yeah what was it is that how you say it? yeah i think so yeah uh i would i would work one of those right now if i knew where like if i'm set up on a point and i know where i'm casting to and i know oh. about how far it's got to go down uh -huh. If I know like right about where I'm casting is where the fish are, mm -hmm. I know that I'm keeping it in the strike zone. Right. I don't okay. even need to have a forward facing sonar. I'm just like popping it up and letting it sink. Pop, right. pop, letting it sink. Pop, pop, letting it sink. I can literally fish the same spot with a jerk bait like 50 feet away from me. Sure. The, the, the possibilities of being able to fish one spot with a jerk bait way the fuck away from you is crazy <laughs> so i want to get one of those right now and i don't even have the forward facing sonar and right. it's made to be able to utilize what forward facing sonar has well i think it's really cool that you one you brought up the forward facing sonar again just to drive home like trust me when i say this if you didn't watch any coverage and you came to us to just yeah. kind of try to sum it up so you can only spend two hours listening to this instead of a week you yeah have to say it again and you did they're telling us this is going to be great for your front facing sonar, like everything you heard. And that's why you're saying, I don't have a front facing sonar, but I want this. Or a lot of these baits we're talking about, we're just skipping over the fact that they said front facing sonar, but they fucking did. And because of that, that's why you brought it up again. The other yep. thing is, I think you're, pointing out something that because of the grow in, in, in front facing sonar, because of the explosion on the market, we're mm -hmm. getting new baits as a result, but you don't have to have yeah. the front facing sonar to benefit from that discovery. So to say, right. Yep. Yeah. They're definitely like these things can really help with a forward facing sonar. Yeah. But they're definitely not, anything that you need to have a forward facing sonar for right because you i mean and they came about probably because of the forward facing sonar the fact yeah. that you see that these these fishers are going out there and they're seeing this behavior on right the forward facing sonar they're saying hey we should make yeah. a bait that does this i mean you know so for yeah so forever Everybody's been, I mean, when you're talking about pros and stuff, it's all about eliminating dead water, being able to move on and not fish mm -hmm. where there isn't a fish. Mm -hmm. When you don't have the sonar to show you that there's a fish there, you're going to fish it anyways because that's how you've done it the whole time. That's how I do it because I don't have a forward facing sonar. Mm -hmm. So when you're out there fishing and you're casting, like the only difference between you and a person with a forward facing sonar when you're using a bait like the Kredge is that they're able to see if there's a fish coming up to bite it. You sure. just got to keep working it until you feel a fish bite. It's the same shit. Right, right. You know, if you Good go point. out there with a the forward-facing sonar and you point it there and you say, oh, there's a fish in those weeds, you might not get him to move and come up and bite it. And then you just know, oh, he didn't want that. Mm. Mm -hmm. But I can go to the exact same spot, cast out the credge, and just be like, I don't know if there's a fish there. And then I get it to bite it, and then I go, hey, Look at that. There was a fish there. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> all right. Next so, thing. What you got? All right, dude. Let's uh, hit that Bill Lewis. Yeah, that's what I, I was so looking I, at too. Hell so yeah. So I was telling you about this. So first off, we'll transition into the depth charge right away because that's a sinking bait that's supposed to like vibrate and stuff. 
has a bunch of different pieces of metal in there that makes it sink and that's supposed to give you a better return on the forward facing sonar yada yada we don't need to keep <laughs> beating this horse he died a while ago <laughs> <laughs> uh but the zigzag that's the one i had down dude so this thing is crazy here's the thing i'm looking at it and i'm like i don't know what this is really i'm thinking like what do they even classify this as is this like some sort of a lipless crankbait is this supposed to be like some jig and ripping thing i heard somebody saying something about how you would like it would be good for ice fishing or whatever no oh. and i'm just like is it what it what is it supposed <laughs> to be i don't even know uh-huh Bill Lewis's website says the excitement of the topwater bite is simply unrivaled. The Bill Lewis zigzag has added a little more fun into the mix designed to be tied on in front of a walking bait. The yep. zigzag yep. mimics an even smaller bait fish being chased and adds another layer of realism to your presentation. Yep. So you're supposed to literally tie that on and then it has a little ring in the back, which the person that I saw talking about it was like, oh, you could put like a blade bait there or put something else there. Bill Lewis has designed this to have that ring tied on to your walking the dog bait. So you were Yeah, so what is that? Dog. What's a walking bait? You gotta help me out because I that's so, my exact note is the same. A walking bait would be the uh the the uh jow jowler jowler oh that we okay. were talking about that's a walking bait okay uh that one has a lip on it but uh the the most famous one is a yozir uh not yoziri um uh spook it's a okay just a ziri does no shit damn it why can't i think of this right now my brain is uh not working spook <laughs> Uh, fishing lure. The thing that I had about the zigzag is it looks like the front third Headed. of the crankbait. Like it's only the front third. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's like just the front, but it's it's because it's or it's like the go... head. Cut it off right behind the gills. <laughs> yeah, so it's supposed to go in front of that other bait, but like the head in Zara spook. That's why I was getting the mm -hmm. the name. Put that In one up to the screen. Do you right have a good? Do you have a good photo of it? Yeah, let's do. You this guys one. are just gonna have to get this one on YouTube. This is like the bay, the bass uh, version. Oh so no, I can't like describe that. Bait. It looks like that a fucking airstream. Yeah, or like a blimp. <laughs> or a blimp. Like like a, yeah, it's like a, a shaped like a thin, thin zeppelin. Yep. That one doesn't have the uh, hooks on it in that picture, but it has right. two treble hooks on that one. Yeah. You if you go a little bit bigger, I believe the they rings. have like three treble hooks, but in the front you would hook that other one. Yeah. Okay. And a so walking bait is you you would walk the dog, so it would just go back and forth and back and forth. You right. pull it on like a slack line, and every time you pop it, it turns the other direction and it just keeps going. Okay. Yeah. And there's different sizes on that one. There's a super spook and a Zara spook and then the spook junior. <laughs> all that kind of stuff so like that was the originator that was probably the most famous one and then everybody came out with their own brand of it so there's a bunch of different versions of that and it's literally saying take this bait put it on the front of your favorite bait and make a new thing and make a new thing that is that's cool now that you yeah. say that, take this bait yeah. and put it on the front of your already favorite bait. And now you have a new presentation. You have a new bait. Yeah. That's really cool. But this is the one I was talking about when we were talking about the alligator chasing something. This is the one that I had oh, seen yeah. where it was like a predator chasing oh, a smaller, sure. getting chased. So you're, yeah, that's yeah. cool though. Like to, to hear you put it, put this on front of your favorite bait and now you have a new presentation. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, and this one, I think, makes more sense than the other one. The other one yeah. is just like one bait where the fish isn't smart enough to be able to see the difference on the side. I think it just doesn't put two and two together that like that's what it is. It's just sure. a different looking bait. Right, right. Where this one, I think it does understand that like that's one fish trying to chase another fish. Right. I'm about to eat them both. <laughs> <laughs> and the and again, the way you said it, like that other one was one. This is not. This is like yeah. an addition. It's the expansion pack of fucking fishing lures. Yep. Yep.
So I think we're we're running short on time. So I'm just going to hit you with two more. Yeah. The other ones I don't think are that important. Uh, some of there was some weird different stuff out there, but I it's cool. Like in theory, maybe it'll be something different, but I'm just going to move on. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I got only so, one thing that we'll, we'll wrap on. Uh, oh no, there's one more thing I want to talk. There's one more bait that I want to talk about. And then I have one that will fade out at the end. Okay. Okay. On. So the one that like got me pretty excited because I like to fish like weightless flukes is like one of my favorite ways to fish. Okay. There's a company called BKK. Okay. That came out with a hook that has a weighted keeper on it. So like when you have the hook and the keeper is like on some of them, they'll have a part that's in the eyelet of the hook. Yep. They'll have a keeper that's like in the hook and then you would stick that into the nose into like the soft that, plastic yeah it's like yep it's like the hook near the eye has these little hooks on it and you stick your soft plastic into those little hooks that yep. keeps the soft plastic on the hook yep yeah yep and this company came out with ones that are weighted so like oh, that keeper itself is yeah. weighted so when you put it in there it gives it a little bit of weight yeah so like you're kind of being able to weight it like a texas rig or put it a jig head on there but you're putting the weight slightly in the front so it's not making it fall weird and you can make it fall a little faster mm. or in like the case of like if you have the z-man that has the elastomer product that Plastic. floats yeah you can't really fish that without you know weight. like having some weight there because yeah. it won't go down it'll sit right on the surface right so having that is going to open up some different options for you and one like that floats like that you can essentially like let it fall all the way to the bottom but it because it floats a little bit the tail's going to keep it off of the bottom a little bit like oh, it won't yeah sink all the but you can like yeah. let it fall more natural like i'm excited about the applications and to see how it works but that hook right was just like nice dude i've thought about doing stuff like this on my own yeah like how do you i just set don't it have a tackle company <laughs> i've bought parts that weren't i literally have bought oversized like corkscrews mm -hmm. that work as a bait keeper to try to do that same thing and they just weren't heavy enough oh nice yeah and now there's a hook company that came out with my idea basically yeah which i mean they probably had the same idea that i had years ago or whatever it's not like yeah no i know it's not like they stole shit from me i'm not just i'm not no 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 trying I, to say anything yeah. but i'm just like <laughs> this is literally what i've been thinking about right and like, somebody did what is. i've been thinking oh yeah you've been trying to rig it up and figure it out for however long and it's like oh here it is yeah in a clean engineered way <laughs> yep <Sweet>. hell yeah <laughs> yep and then the the last uh one that I got uh, is I got to tell you, too, we're talking about G-Crack. Yeah. Where I, that's I was the... calling, dude, I was taught, I've been calling it G-Crack forever. Yeah. And I got to, I got to apologize to G-Crack because they're not G-Crack, they're G-Crack. Yeah. Which I think has been a thing for us for a long time. My first album that I ever bought with my own money was master p and g crack is ghetto dope yep crack yeah dude ghetto dope i was an older kid <laughs> g crack <laughs> yeah when we were 12 years old learning how to make crack like crack this. yep <laughs> <laughs> anyways so here's the deal bellows gill and the bellows stick i have both of these already but they had made them in whatever material that they used on those they still have the original ones available but now they're going to make these ones in the elastomer too so they're going to be super stretchy nice. way more durable but they're also going to float so you have 
the bellows stick is a very good bait if you want to be using any of the you know chicken rig tiny child uh nico any of that face down ass up style <laughs> bait yeah. it's gonna work really well because it floats you know okay okay because you basically a lot of those you put like a a pin weight on in like the nose of the bait so oh. the nose is down yeah but then the hook is higher up yeah so when you're kind of working it you know chicken rig makes it look like it's pecking the bottom yep. and yep. nico rig and they're all v- versions of the same thing okay yeah, yeah yeah so when you so when you add something that's super durable and then you have it float it's just going to open up some doors on what you're able to do with these baits and not have to worry about it plus that elastomer like z-man's been putting on their things that they're like you know 30 times tougher 40 times tougher i don't remember what it is than the rest of the (laughs) market dang they might have to take their shit off the (laughs) of their (laughs) packages because a lot of people are starting to do it now but right right it's so stretchy that like some of it's even kind of hard to put on a hook but once you get it on a hook you don't have to worry about it because right the the fish can't rip it apart yeah i think you yeah with keep it on geek crack g crack i don't oh i do have one more with g crack no okay Uh, with g crack keep it on that the immo kimoshi cube q bone oh did you i think you teased these last the episode the g crack the g crack yeah so i teased i teased the dice yeah baits yeah and this is g cracks this is g crack dice version of it yeah 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 and i yeah i actually didn't write it down but i was i wanted to touch on it because it it's one of those like where it gives you more confidence like the dice baits are literally shaped like a dice and they look weird and i'm like i don't that's crazy that you're getting bit off of that this one almost has a shape of like it could be a creature because it's not a dice it's kind of it's that same shape with like the 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 flanges coming off of it yeah. but it's almost kind of like a rounded something yeah it's like a really fucked up ball yeah it's yeah, like a ball right. that's that's been spun too fast or something like that it's yeah. like it changes shape cuz it's not quite a football but it's right. not quite a baseball and yeah. it has instead of the cube in the middle it has this yeah. weird uh, cylinder shape. I don't know. Yeah, but it feels more like something than just a cube does. Okay. To me. Okay. You know, that's the only thing is like it doesn't. What in nature is a cube? Right. Not anything. Like almost nothing has hard edges in nature. Yeah. Right? And I know they get bit. I mean, don't at me because a fucking maple leaf has a hard you know, angle in it. That's not what I'm talking right. about. Look at a maple leaf as a whole and it's like broken up, you know, like, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, but it's the same thing, right? These, these, what the fuck is this thing? It's just got, yeah, it's got, it's a weird shape. Yeah. And it has the skirt of a spinner bait slammed into yeah. it. Like it's got like it's yeah. having a bad fucking hair day, right? Yeah, all over the place. I don't even know how to put this thing on a hook. What is going? Like, dude, they're crazy looking. Hmm. Yeah, but I think people drop shot with them. Is that what they're doing? I, yeah, they're just putting on a drop shot hook and then just kind of bouncing it there. So then you got this weird thing that's just like <laughs> <laughs> looks like a fucking know, alien, like you said from earlier. Is, yeah. Bass is just like, I don't know what that is, but I'm eating it. <laughs> I don't know. I guess is I what guess. they're thinking. Yeah. I don't know. I can't figure out any other reason. It works. I don't know. All right. What's your next one? Yeah. Oh, a live target. Live oh. target had okay. a whole uh, thing of, um, they call them ICT. It's called injected core technology. Yeah. But uh, they have different soft baits now. They have a sunfish swim bait a soft plastic craw, a shad swim bait, and a freestyle frog. Damn. All of them are soft plastic. Live Target is known for making like super realistic looking baits and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they did not disappoint. Their crayfish look 
ridiculous. Really? Their frog looks exactly like a real frog. Their sunfish is pretty damn good. It's a swim bait that's not identical to his. It's, I think the gilly is a pretty good comparable, but this yep. one's more of like a su- swim bait where like you would put a cat uh, a hook on it and it's got like a kicker tail where you would just like kind of mm. cast it out and retrieve. Mm-hmm. And then the shad is like the same thing. Okay. But they look really good. And those, the crayfish and that frog are like, damn, damn I dude. didn't see these ones. Who is that again? Live target. Live target. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So live target makes some good shit. Yeah. Yep. And then, yeah, I'm trying to. Yeah. Well, as you figure through, that out, you keep going through your notes. I'm going to do it. the end housekeeping here. And then I got a, one to All fade right. out on that. Okay. I don't know if we should. Yeah, we'll fade out on it. Fuck it. Um. Uh, okay. Yeah. Guys, it's been two hours. If you're in for the full ride, you're already in. You probably like and subscribe and did all that stuff. I hope so, because this is the 2024 iCast special. It's still the number 96 episode. If you didn't see it, 95, we're going to be taking a break. Go back to episode 95. Check the announcement out um, in the full episode there. Uh, Yeah, because we got a break coming up here. So that's the end housekeeping. We got more to talk about. ICAST, we could probably do three hours on, really, if we tried. Um, but we got to wrap it up here. Our two and a half hours is fucking long enough. Right. <laughs> so, Tim, did you have anything yeah. you wanted to jump on? Or I got one that will fade us out on. I mean, do, is your last one a Panther Martin? Nope. Great Lakes. Okay. Oh, Great Lakes. Uh, Go ahead. Go ahead with your Panther. Pan- Panther Martin, real quick. Panther Martin has, like, inline... Uh, spinner baits uh-huh. there you know like the, it's the the spinner bait with the spoon oh shit look at this this isn't a panther martin but this is this is a tiny version of i love that uh, you just have that laying around i know this is a tiny version of a of a runner oh okay nose when yeah. i was talking about that that blade that, bait, yeah, that, the blade hanging down off the jig head, right off the eye, basically, yeah. or like all the way down. But you wouldn't, the eye. you wouldn't get that jig. It was just that it was that head. Oh, okay. And then the the blade would come off of that. But um, so yeah, I was just checking to see if I had <laughs> an inline spinner. I think I got one someplace. Uh, doesn't matter. Inline spinner. So the the Panther Martin has like a vibe. Uh, vibe. It's a different kind of blade where it's set up a little bit different. Some of them are hinged on the outside, like, and then the blade spins completely around it. Oh yeah. The Panther Martin has like almost like a bend, like a like a forty five degree bend in the middle. Okay. And the blade actually like the the rod goes like straight through the blade, so it kind of like spins on an axe. Yeah, it's a little bit different. It's the same idea. Okay. And the Panther Martins have there's still like an inline spinner. Well, this one is the the Panther Martin a uh, high low spin minnow. And what they did was they have a minnow pre-rigged that has is a swim bait, so it has a kicker tail, and then they have the inline spinner in front of that, and then off of that they have the safety pin style uh oh, like no way. spinner bait. Yeah. And on the top there's another the same one of their blades oh my god dude <laughs> so i think it might be a monster in the river because it's got the kick tail yeah. on the back and uh-huh. then the blade spinning in front of it and then off of that there's another blade spinning above it that's nuts so it's like just all that together but i just had to throw that out there because that might have been like the the craziest one i saw where i'm like there's a lot going on there. yeah that's what i was thinking yeah. like god damn there's a lot going on here <laughs> oh my god yeah Okay. So, anyways, I I heard about the Great Lakes. I didn't write them down. What did you hear? Yeah. So we'll fit, we'll kind of just we'll fade out on this one. You know, I'll pick All a right. spot. But okay, Great Lakes finesse. So here we go, finesse. They have a soft minnow that was, I thought yep. was really cool. They they had what they were calling hover darting action that they built into that they have achieved. I guess. Okay. And I was like, okay, whatever whatever hover darting is. Yeah. And here's how they achieved it. Okay. It's a concave belly on a soft minnow. So Okay. It's a soft minnow, it's just a soft plastic minnow. 
but yeah. it, it kind of goes out just a little bit at the belly. Yeah. And kind of makes a little lip at the bottom of it. Yeah. And then those lips come in almost as if like it was gutted and held open. Oh. So there's like this, like if you were to, if you, a full size fish, you gut it. Yeah. Up, you know, like cut it from the gills back to the butthole. And yeah. you open it up to get the guts out. But yep. you could just prop it open. And imagine that just shrunk yeah. down to minnow size. And then so like when they let it fall, it's just catching water and then it like it, just yeah. slows the fall rate and so it, much that it And it moves erratically. That's what they said. Hmm. I could see that, like where it's just catching water and doing all that weird stuff as it falls and stuff. Right. And it hovers. Crazy. Yeah. It was really weird. And then the cool thing is, I don't know how they did this because it said they said it, it moves erratically. They actually had jigs that they sold that were specially tuned to go with the soft plastic though they were separate the jig was separate from the minnow so you could buy the minnow by itself buy the jigs by themselves but they were actually tuned to go with this hover darting minnow Hmm. that they created gnarly